my god, hello and welcome to uh, Super Chat Catch-Up for Black Widow, episode 144. I think that's actually correct. Ha! Huh. Memory. Um, Memories. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna answer the ones that we didn't quite catch that time. Uh, what are we... Yeah. What, what, what is it, what are these Super Chats from? The episode what, EFAP? Where we broke down Black Widow. Oh, speaking of memories. Uh-huh. Oh. I'm a Ray Winston, yeah? Ray Winston has... No, well, I mean, I guess he owns many pairs, but not in the traditional sense. Or maybe it's in the super traditional sense that he owns many pairs of memories. They are his to do with as he pleases. He was a great villain. He's been in the MCU for ages. Really, right? Like when Iron Man's doing all of his stuff, Ray Winston's over there doing his stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And it took him that long to stop him. Never, we never heard about him. Well, no, well we heard about him, but we never, we never met him or ever had anything to do with him. It's a secret yeah, we, organization we that Black Widow knew about. Yeah, we just never knew that he had a, a massive floating fortress in the fortress sky that nobody ever noticed, ever. So that's kind of... That's kind of retroactively making people look incompetent, isn't it? I, I think it's excellent work. I I really liked it when they said he blew up his house, and so she assumed his entire operation stopped. She didn't check, but why would you? <laughs> why are you reminding me? Oh, she assumes no. a lot. We assume that your operation stopped. We assume that you got out. I assume... Do, do, do. Why would you she, assume she anything when you're a secret whole, agent? You remember she had a, her whole family? She even knew... Red Guardian guy she just didn't care about. His sister, she just ditched. Yeah. And she even, they, they actually highlight that one in the film. It's like, yeah, you ditched me. And it's like, yep. Which doesn't make any sense. Like, mm -hmm. it's Natasha Romanoff we're talking about. Why the hell would she do that? But all right. It's just so weird because she spends all her time in the MCU up to that point talking about how her only family, the uh, MCU heroes, the Avengers. Almost like she's lying. Yeah, she might be. She might be. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I guess we'll read the first one. Unfortunately, I have the problem of not knowing if we're going forward or backward in time, but I suppose we'll find out as we read them. We're going this backwards. Thing. This is all from the Black Widow stream. Oh my god. I meant backwards or forwards, even considering that. As, as oh normal. my god. But here we Maybe, go. Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Percentage-wise, it's, it's not going to make much of a difference if you put it on, like, a timeline. Well, it know? does when you have the ones that are like, oh, to clarify my earlier Super Chat. You know, like, if they do that, then it's like, oh, wait, what? Yeah. But we can Don't usually think of notice it as, those. Just, just imagine it says, to clarify a Super Chat, I shall send shortly. <laughs> just read it like that. Nobody's ever done that, but maybe they will now that you've said that. Maybe they will. Maybe I'm going to send something to... confusing, and they send one that's just... Oh. How did you know you'd do that? Anyway, the first one says, There's nowhere to run, Black Widow. There's nowhere to run, Black Widow! I guess, <laughs> see, because that could mean that they, they're talking about the end, where she can't... Well, I don't know. Yeah. Or they're talking about the fact that we're covering it, and there's nowhere for her to escape now. I, I don't know. Interesting. Anyway. The whole film relies on Little Widow not using her pistol or wrist taser on a person she was happy to blow away with a sniper ten seconds before. True. That first person she encounters, if she just tasered her, the whole film ends. Interesting. Yeah, but it? that would be... Yeah, that'd be pretty good, I'll think, considered... <laughs> it would save us Even a lot of time, a... though. It's... And it'd save... Yeah, save us a lot of time. Uh, Madvocate, Sephiroth's theme plays. Now I will bring Black Widow despair. Um, I don't get your, your weird weeb references, okay. <laughs> says, oh. I'm guessing that's just something Sephiroth said. I assume so, yeah. My oh my, EFAP 144. Or you can say one gross EFAP. Is there some significance one... for 144? Uh, let me, let me check. Sorry, I have to click a new tab because after this, because I saw it just a moment ago, Gamers Nexus did the worst pre-built we've ever reviewed. Alienware R13, $5,000 gaming PC benchmarks. Now, if you spend 5,000, I know Alienware is a bit of a meme, but if you spend five grand on a PC, 
That Wasn't better amazing. be a goddamn amazing machine. I thought, yeah, I thought this stuff was good, it was just expensive. I've always heard that it's meh and expensive. Oh. Um, You're just buying the brand at that point, though. Essentially, yeah. Damn. It's like buying the brand, like McDonald's. Everyone who goes there is a food snob who only buys it because it's McDonald's. I actually eat at McDonald's today. Like, oh, well, very nice. Yes, indeed. Oh, what's what's been on the... We the shall dine here. Yeah, they have only the finest, most pure spring Nuggies. McWater. <laughs> Oh, did you uh, catch the, they get from the game of string. equestrian? If that's what they call it, a game of equestrian. Uh, quite indeed. A game of equestrian. And they just like very softly placed down a happy meal. Now, to be to be full, to be I guess thorough, an equestrian is someone who rides a horse. Okay. The the horse itself would be equus. So that's well, yeah, because indoor. that's what yeah, because yeah, that's the uh, horse Latin, Latin cool. name, right? Is like equus. indeed, yes. I, you know, did you know the the statues uh, that you see of like generals and soldiers and stuff from the good old days who were on a horse? Generally, these will be at like mausoleums and graveyards and stuff. Yeah, yeah I've or just statues and right. statues in general. You know, because we should build statues over here. Um, the amount of legs that the horse has on the ground signals kind of how they died. Um, like if they have this a equestrian statue. Death. Um, let's see. It's a co so. I apparently. Oh, that's a shame. Apparently, this is uh, potentially not. Ooh, this might not be true. I always thought it was. Uh, I always thought it was true, but I guess it might just be, sort of a thing that has gone around. Um, if uh, you get two feet off the ground, is. It's supposed to be two feet off the ground, the rider died in battle. One foot off the ground, the rider was wounded in battle and was later on, uh, they, they died as a result of the wounds. And if all four legs are on the ground, the rider survived all the battles and died of unrelated causes. That's supposedly um, what it is. And it says hmm, here that this one is definitely a myth. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay, and, right. Which is, which is kind of a shame because that sounds like a cool thing that's real, you know? Like I just mean, a, if, a if it were like, like uh, if you were saying this is American statues or something, I could believe it. But if it were worldwide for all statues with horses, I'd just be like, that seems unlikely, doesn't it? But yeah, it does seem unlikely. But it's it that's a cool that that yeah. could be a cool thing. It was true. We'll chuck that in the big, big, big bin of that would be cool if it was true. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, Alien was expensive, and I watched that review afterwards. But EFAP one forty four, yes, was. Yes. A full breakdown review of Black Widow with Madvocate and Indigo Gaming. That's true. Indigo's not capitalized on that. Is that how he spells his name? Oh, that could just be a mistake on my part. Oh, Fringy. Well, uh, Wait, what? Fringy. I... We'll, we'll, have, we'll have Fringy <laughs> fix that later. Oh, okay. We'll have, we'll have him go back and fix that. EFAP 143 Back in time was... and fixed it. Well, no, you can oh. fix it by just... No, that was editing. the meme. Because... Go, no. Like that's, oh, that's yeah, the extent right, to yeah. which we have him fix it is to go back and tell me to fix it instead of just telling right. me to do it. And he comes through the machine. He's like, "Indigo, capital. It's the truth. Am I too soon?" Because <laughs> it's like, I don't know, one forty-three. Fear him. <laughs> Fear Indigo. <laughs> Fear him. What a stupid thing to say. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know. Like, thanks for the helpful information, buddy. You should all watch the Mitchells vs. the Machines, then watch Southpaw's video about the movie after. It's an excellent movie. You have seen it, right? I, uh, I have seen Mitchells vs. the Machines. I like it. I saw a lot of people being upset that it didn't win uh, Best Animation. Well, it's just it's just another one of those um, things, right, is that Disney tends to dominate uh, mm. the animation category at the Oscars. What would have won? Like, in Kanto, right? That probably won. Oh man, I'm so out of the loop on that. I yeah, I'd just be like, yeah, maybe. I, I remember know. people really liked it, but it's just because it's it's the thing that I, it was burned into my. I think when Spider Verse won, the last time that it wasn't a Disney film was Rango, but the last Rango. time that it was the last time that it was a year that a Disney film wasn't in contention, I think was like 2006. I think that was so that like. Sometimes another movie will win, 
but that's in the year when, like, there's no other Disney film that comes out. Uh, generally. Like, mm. Pixar tend to win all the time in Disney as well, like, Disney Animation Studios. So, like, any time that somebody else wins, it's like, oh, that's nice. Acknowledging that there is animation beyond just mm. Disney. And now, in that category, we're not going to be getting any more entries from uh, the Netflix animation studio. They, no, I they shut but that uh, down. I don't think they even got any because of the rules that... Uh, oh, yeah, Because there's that movie, right. Uh, Klaus, right? I haven't seen it yet, and I should. Yeah, with Norm MacDonald. Um, the one that's... Yeah. yeah, it's like a... It's, it's, I think it's like a fusion of 2D and 3D. Like, it was animated in 3D, but then finished off in 2D. I, it was something like that. And that was probably a really cool movie, but I don't think that films that aren't released theatrically uh, can get nominated. Which means that, like, any film that's just straight streaming, I don't think is, uh... I don't think it's eligible. I'm sorry, wait, did Netflix shut down all of their animations? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it is that specifically more t geared towards their in-house animated content geared towards children is, like, significantly ramped down. Right. But I'm pretty sure that the adult animation stuff is still... So, I guess more hoops, and what what are the other ones? The it prints? Is, it's, more it animation. says here that the uh, ba -ba 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 animation department shut down, so that says... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, yeah, but I guess the thing is, is that there's a difference between whatever they're producing in-house and the stuff that they, you know, is, is um, in part like an outside external production. Mm -hmm. Like Fortiche? Because I was going to say, like, it seems really weird that we do yeah, want to... Yeah, Fortiche is, uh... Well, I think, uh, I think Arcane was right in Fortiche specifically, and then it's on Netflix. So, like, Netflix distributes it, but I don't know that Netflix has anything really to do with it. Um, production-wise. Now, uh... Let's see, um... Apparently, Netflix currently touts Boss Baby as the ideal of what an yeah, anime yeah, series yeah, yeah. on the platform yeah. should be. Because it makes a lot... The, 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 the reputation that Netflix had in the animation space for a time was you could get ideas made on Netflix for animated shows that would be harder to sell to other networks. Um, but it seems like they've decided that they're not going to do that anymore. Which I guess means now your best choice is probably Adult Swim, right? Like, Adult Swim would be the place where you can get something like Smiling Friends, for instance. Which, I mean, if you saw Smiling Friends, and you were like, where should this end up? You'd probably be like, I could see it being on Adult Swim. Yeah, exactly. Swim, um, yeah. I think, I think, uh, and I mean, that, that network should lean into that more. That, I think that, I think there's like a growing reputation of unique, interesting animated projects you can find on Adult Swim. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've always been willing to make. They've been, they've been willing well, to put out that weird rip, experimental really, stuff out there. You know, Robot Chicken was uh was unique for what it, I mean. It still is really. I mean, really everything from was. Tim and Eric to Xavier Renegade Angel, just all the to you know that, Aqua um, Teen Hunger Force. The progenitor just, to uh, to Archer, I think it was called Frisky Dingo. That was on Adult. I know Spider. that show. Yeah, they they would they do it all. A lot of that weird strange dare i say uh, uh what would you even Surreal. call them surrealist yeah yeah absurd uh, i think i think absurdist, absurdist, might be, absurdist? Like, absurdist? smiling friends is absurdist i think would be a good way to I know, describe like, that show. xavier is um but it's it's just like uh we just need a shell to house in all of our funny lines and clever dialogue you know mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the way that mxc is kind of a shell for that as well um, that's still going right MXC, no, it's oh, not. Oh, no, sorry, not, not MXC. Um, MST3K, that's still going. Um, I think they're still doing work. I don't know what form that is taking, if they have their own show or their own YouTube channel now, because it used to be a show on TV, and I guess now it is a... Well, I, yeah, I guess it's a... Um, hmm, I think it's just a YouTube thing. Uh, let me check. Mystery... Science, thank you for filling it out. Um, what? Hmm. Let me see. I will. I will check mst3k.com. I think it uh, got revived on Netflix, didn't it? Yeah, I, I think it exists in some form. Uh, because I'm on the. Let me go to episode list, and can I go to season? 
12, and I think they're doing a season 13 too. It doesn't have a date for them about the show. I was seeing it discussed. Originally, Apparently season 15 is already out. It's like there's three episodes at least. I gotcha. I figured because they've mentioned something on it um, here on the site. But yeah, because it originally aired for 11 seasons from 88 to 99. And it has... Yeah, I guess it's still going. It looked... Oh yeah, 2000... In 2015, fans of MST3K united behind a record-breaking Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign to revive the show for a brand new 14-episode season that premiered on Netflix in 2017. So I suppose I suppose it's still going, and I hope so. It's a great it's a great show. I really like it. Um, yeah, I guess they're doing some funding here. Hmm. Make more MST3K.com. Very cool. Very cool. Um, remember in The Punisher when Tom Jane is beaten to a pulp by the Russian and barely wins? Good fights are hard to come by these days. I remember that fight quite well because, uh, yeah, he's at that point in the film, he's dominated quite hard after like an all-time low near the beginning, and then that Russian fucks him up. That one I don't remember. I remember something that was burned into my memory was when he, it, I think it was in the like final overall battle when he's fighting all the goons and he like stabs the dude through the mouth. I, that's like images burned in there of like from that Oh, film. is it with an arrow he does that? Or, or no, knife? No, I think he does it with a knife and then you see the blade like through Yeah, I remember, I remember that visual as well. I like that movie yeah. uh, from what I remember. Well, I mean, that was definitely of the era, right, of early to mid-2000s actions movies. Kind of like the same era's face-off, you know? I would go as far as saying, uh, does the thing of a simple thing done pretty well. It's so simple, the, the story in that. Because yeah, I still yeah. remember it, like, crystalline. It's just like, it's basically um, a more violent, more dark taken. It's the same, it could probably fall into the same uh, area. Yeah, I, I think so. I guess I'd say in terms of, like, what it's going for, yeah. Because, um, I remember as well, I, I, I remember that video for that film better than I probably should, because I haven't seen it in, like, a bazillion years, but... He's, um, trying to get information out of somebody, and he's, he's, uh, cooking meat. Uh, and then he says... You know, um, there's like a, a limit on how the human body can process pain. And the guy's like, what? And he's like, if you um, experience too much too fast, it'll be like, it'll singe all of the, uh... Cause he's, like, he's intending to poke him with a hot poker sort of thing. And he's like, mm -hmm. "What? you'll you'll smell your meat burning, but you won't be able to feel it because uh, it'll have burned all your nerves straight away. And so he pokes him with a popsicle stick. And the guy, like, screams. And, he, and he's cooking meat in the background, so... It's just like... He convinces him that he's fucking destroying him, and the guy gives him the information, and then he's just like, you're fine. And he's just like, oh. Because yeah. <laughs> I think he's just like a nerdy guy. Uh, I can't remember. But yeah, there was some fun stuff in that movie. I barely remember most of it. There, there are like parts that I can remember, but a lot of it is a haze. Like, it reminds me of Law Abiding Citizen in that the revenge the main character gets is so thorough. Fucking insane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because in the end, isn't it? Uh, it's like the car was passing through, like, a fucking, like, all these explosions, right? Wasn't that? Or was he, well, so he was it, locked in it? Or was yeah, it's by John Travolta's him? car collection, I'm pretty sure. He drives him through yeah. it and blows up all of the cars individually. Yeah. But that's after that. he's lost his wife, his son, his facility, his reputation. He's destroyed literally everything and then blows Probably, him up. Yeah. Pretty straightforward revenge story. Yeah, it'd be a fun one to revisit someday. That'd be an EFAP movies for sure, I think. That would definitely be an EFAP movies. In 2012, a cinema in Nottingham accidentally screened Paranormal Activity 4 instead of Madagascar 3. Needless to say, <laughs> the parents weren't too pleased. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> That's the kind of thing, though. Surely you'd realize within the first, like, five minutes. You would think so, yeah. There's no, because yeah, I mean, it's I'm just like... so stuck. It's not like a film. I can't remember the longest time I've spent without realizing I was watching the wrong thing, but. Well, 
I got a recent one because when I went to see Sonic 2, I went into the wrong cinema, but I figured it out as soon as I saw the opening, you know, like when it was saying the production studios and everything, it's like, wait, I don't see Sega. This isn't the film. <laughs> like, I don't see Paramount. I did the wrong yeah. place. But, you should have explained I, that loudly in the theater. Wait a see, you should have stood up. I, wait I, a second, and you block a lot of people behind you because you're tall. There was nobody you in stood there. Stood up. Well, oh, there no, wasn't? It, that was one of my first clues that something was wrong, was there was uh, absolutely no one in the set of it. You think, and you knew people do you think be Snyder first people think that? Like, in their delusion? <laughs> they walk into a theater that's empty, of course, and be they're the like, wrong showing. This, this, this couldn't be the Zack Snyder's Justice League. There's no one There's here. No it should be here. packed. It should be <laughs> to the bottom with my brother. Well, to be fair, no, Snyder I Cut didn't make it to theaters, right? No, it didn't. It was uh, <laughs> only on at HBO Max. And yet, with that, the Batman, a film which was released theatrically, got double the viewership in its first week on HBO Max. Interesting. That is interesting. That yeah. is like, wow. People. Well, well, yeah. the, fun, the really interesting part is Mortal Kombat still has the highest debut on that streaming service above the Batman. Just a little bit, but above That's it. That's interesting. Yeah. I guess. Hmm. It's a little surprising, but not it's hard really one to explain surprising. Exactly, I guess. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, something that is worth factoring in is that Mortal Kombat did release theatrically, but it also released the same day on HBO Max. So, like, if you take that into account, it's like, well, Batman surely would be like categorically this was this was a super successful debut for that film. Uh, but I mean, I guess there's something to be said about the fact that a, a 45 day window, but from like theaters to streaming that's short um yeah, but they've been getting okay. shorter yeah do we have a a, a a release date for the next mortal Kombat? because i wouldn't mind I seeing it coming out like next year or the year after i think well that'll be a fun back to back I mean, i'll watch it i mean johnny cage is going to be in it so that'll probably be fun hopefully the less the less we have of our boring ass yeah. dull shit protagonist and the more we get of a a good raunchy snarky duke nukem kind of johnny cage might be really fun to see well, please more violence to it more fun fun violence um i have a hot take crank one is better than crank two um i've seen um, both of them but i don't have much passion for them so well like, i don't right. i don't do drugs but i do assume if the original is that good they would eventually you know Keep it going. Crank was uh that was um the Jason the, the, Statham. Jason Statham. Yeah. Oh. I, maybe I've seen that. Maybe I have seen that. It's, it's I have hard. not. It's blurred together. <laughs> that is era. that the one where he has to keep his heart rate up? Yeah. Okay. Got I am. Some oh, kind I've of seen poison in him that's gonna stop his heart unless he keeps it hyperactive. So he has to keep doing crazy shit. I feel that's like I'm a, making up a transporter. But oh yeah, know. yeah. That's a that's a fun movie. Why well, um, bail around that? I think Crank. It's where you say Crank and Crank Two because the premise of Crank is so very specific and strange that you'd imagine yeah, this couldn't possibly right. happen again, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> Crank we One and Speed through, you know. It's, that's I think, true. I think Crank One ends with the, the assumption that he died, and then Crank Two is like, nope, he's still going. I no, think that's how it works. Okay. All right. Okay. Crank also, two, spoilers control. for those who yeah. <laughs> have not seen Crank. And Crank 2. I guess we haven't spoiled Crank 2, but we sort of it somewhat spoiled it. Not, maybe just a little bit. Not much. The fun is in the journey, right? It is yep, slightly, exactly. mildly tarnished. It is a. It's just. A, it is a little patina. Shall well, we say. perhaps the very knowledge that I have provided encourages them to see a movie they otherwise would not have. Yeah, because we don't want to see Jason Statham die at the end of an action movie. I've even said, I talked to Frank about this, but like, I would spoil a lot of what I consider to be incredibly important parts of Buffy's storyline if it meant that's the difference between you not watching it and watching it. I like, think I would do the same in a lot of scenarios as well. I would rather use, it's worth, it's worth having the ending spoiled if you sit through a, a good movie and a great journey that you wouldn't have otherwise known. Yeah, exactly. You know, seeing the connective uh, pieces is what makes those payoffs meaningful and they still be meaningful. Because, I mean, yeah. you know, ultimately, when I rewatch something I've already seen before, it's not like I'm not enjoying it for what it is, or alternatively finding new things about it that I like. Well, what was funny is, um, honestly, I think it might have actually been a year prior to uh, watching the show with Fring. I explained my favorite character's entire yeah, arc, and uh, it was all <laughs> forgotten by the time you watched it. Yeah. Which is, was, I think I said, I hope you forget this by the time we eventually watch it. 
-hmm. Just because it was what to sell the show on, but then simultaneously, you know, it's cooler to see it unravel without knowing where it's going. Yeah, of course. Well, between you and me, Mahler, I'll just take you at your word for it, and I'll uh, I'll see the show, and it'll be great. Well, yeah, I had a lot more difficult time selling the show until more and more people were like, "Oh, he's right," and yeah. I was like, "Yay, no, I'm I'm fine." <laughs> Well, I mean, there is definitely, because after those first two seasons, yep. you know, I was sitting there, and it's just like, what are we, what are we, like, <laughs> what is it well, going to get be good? Fair, uh, I think if, because the plan to, it will involve Theo, and he was like the most cynical of all the people, even more so than you, I think. He said that he wouldn't, he yeah. just wouldn't be watching any of this if not for a friend asking him to tag along. <laughs> um, which obviously, in a sense was what you were doing as well, but he, he just had a lot less to compliment, um, but, uh, mm -hmm. not even Theo could resist Angel once you get to the best. Yeah, damn, after season four, holy shit. <laughs> holy it's, a, it's, shit. A <laughs> it it's a big test. It is a big test. I, legitimately, before we got up to it, I'm like, I know you said it's really bad, but, like, really, how much could it kill yeah. my investment, really? To you give know? you an idea, Rags, it would be like if I said... Oh, Black Widow 2 is so good, you just need to see Black Widow, Loki, Falcon the Winter Soldier, and Endgame. As long as you see all of them, it's like, why do I have to see all of that? And why the f- would, how... <laughs> As a friend, I would never tell you to do that. <laughs> the problem, like, the thing is, everyone who's, who's done it, it's like, you do have to see the shit part, don't you? It's like, yep, you do. You do. You absolutely do. You can't skip it. Bad face. But hey, yeah. Uh. Since the Black Widow movie has proven Natasha can survive falling from many places on her, does it take away from the impact of the endgame scene? Does Fringy now have to update his video? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> this was a year ago, well, nice. It's, that's, that's yeah, really there funny. You go. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, the, the falling specifically didn't, but the two families, that absolutely impacts well, endgame. It would be a, I'm, I assume they're not serious. I, it would just be a fun meme for you to be like, I, it is though this scene meme, is tarnished yeah. by the fact that she can clearly yeah. survive. <laughs> like, that is a good meme. Force. That is actually a really good meme. <laughs> Damn. Oh well. Uh, I saw a discussion about objectivity, and after that, the claim that objectively well-written stuff is to do with standards of consistency, a reply said, that's not objectivity, though. That is a relativistic social construct. Yeah, but, um, how many relativistic social constructs do we engage with to the point of d denying anyone else's, uh, viewpoints outright instead of openly being like, well, you know, maybe. This is the, um, the problem people encounter with truth, um, and what is testable. Because, uh, I don't know how controversial I want to be here, but let's just put it in as vague terms as possible. Um, there are certain events that if you deny they exist, uh, people would think not only are you crazy, but like you're damaging to society. Meanwhile, someone could be like, yes, but your idea of what is defined as, as uh, definitive information or truth or tied to whatever object is like all relative to, to what we see and believe as, as human beings or something. You just be like, all right. Uh, to an extent, but uh, you've basically made it so you've deconstructed the entire system of how we even use to measure anything, so what the fuck's the point in anything now? It always annoys me when people use social construct as a way to devalue something's yeah. importance. Um, you generally you generally never see this, and even when you hear people calling something or saying, oh, that's just a social construct, or oh, this is a social construct, they use it, they never say, yeah, this is a social construct. You know, we can't, you know, they never say it in a positive way, even though I think for the most part it is. There's a lot of stuff that's a social construct. Well, and that language. Are <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah it's all fake. We made it up. Well, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, you, you, if you use that as a way to devalue something, I think unless you're specifically referring to a few things, it's not even going to matter. And I don't care if something's a social construct necessarily. A yeah, lot it's about its utility and applicability, right? And how it yeah, maps onto I what in we're a understanding. Social construct, and I live in a social construct, and it's it's it, it's really great. So we're gonna have to be doing better than that. Um, and this this came up when I was I talked to YMS about it on his. I think I think you can find it on his YouTube channel. Um, I want. Yeah. Yeah. The so. He, he made the claim, which is totally fine, you get it all the time, which is uh, every review from everyone is essentially on the same level of it's just them describing their POV, it's not anything more than that, it's just, it's all it's all subjective, ultimately. And I said, sure, but what about when you have a statement like, 
Man, do I like the Batman. The Batman is a fun film that I like. I enjoy the Batman. Fun film, recommend. Versus, the Batman explores what it means to try and commit to a level of justice through a motivator of vengeance and how that can come through your own actions and inspire other people. Um, be it for the better or for the worse, as, as the film balances between in terms of the character finding out and understanding that there's more to his responsibilities as a vigilante, even though that's that's already a contentious position. Um, you know, you go, you go through all of that, and all of it is verifiable through the content. It's not necessarily anything you're feeling, because, it could, you know, I try and highlight this with my work, but it's like, you don't even know what I feel. I've only told you what is, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I was like, so what's the difference between those two reviews? And then YMS was like, well, yeah, okay, one of them is more feelings-based, while the other isn't. But yeah, that difference, I think, is important. Instead of just saying everything is subjective, I feel like that's completely worthless. It doesn't help anyone do anything. Like, it is one of those sort of... It's like arguing with a... I don't know, like like a hard solipsist or someone who thinks we're all brains in a vat it, it's just one of those like why are you why are, are you real can we even have if you're not even well, yeah, interested um, in trying to have a discussion there's almost like why i just have better things to do with my time if you're just gonna you did uh did bring up that we have no way to know even what things what truth is because we could all be in the matrix and i was like yeah but why operate as that there's just no yeah, reason it, to do that yeah, it doesn't technically benefit yeah, well sure. i guess I mean, it's, it would be that um it is it, it, it could be that we're operating in that world. It could also be that we're operating in a world where that's not the case. I can't prove one or well, the even, other. It's, it's it's even if we were room. operating as brains and vats, we all seem to be in brains and vats together operating under the same rules, so nothing changes. You've just added another layer beneath it, which doesn't affect this conversation. Exactly. So we can both be smart asses, but I'd like to be productive if that's all right with you. I don't blame someone for having the thought. I think um, that whenever someone no, has that I, thought, yeah, it's, no, it's very... When, uh... No, it's when people are trying to use it in, like, a discussion to try and... to try and use it... like, like it impacts anything. Well, but that's, like, what your response is, right? It's just a reality. Like, I don't even know if they've thought about it yet, but... It's like, because I could totally see someone being so very compelled by that. Like, oh my god, we could be in the Matrix. Nothing means anything. You're like, whoa, Timmy, s slow oh, down. That is, you You have jumped from one thing to another thing, and just, wow. You, that's yeah, the thing, I, chill, lax. I don't believe anybody operates that way, ultimately, even if they claim to. No, uh, if they do, no, it's people don't. Because at the end of the day, you kind of have to operate within the framework of what you can perceive, your capacity to think and observe, you know, observe things I mean, and Technically someone aspects. could live their life thinking that they're in the Matrix, however they want to make that stay as pleasant and m meaningful and mm. close to the truth of the Matrix as they can to, oh, I, you know, I, I guess, to make uh, life better, but that's almost like what at I'm, what point do we uh, move on? What I'm getting at is that it's kind of, I don't know what it would mean to be able to interact with reality beyond like the framework of being a human you know? Well, that's like, one of the aspects of talking about, you know, these kinds of, in these epistemological discussions, is you could sit down with someone and you could say, all right, we have some base assumptions that we probably both agree on. We can both, we're both talking to each other, we're both independent agents, we can both interact with the world and touch things, and the same rules seem to apply to everything in this thing that we're in is, so, like, we, these are just, we can move on from that, right? Someone I was saying to Duma, that our, um, our system has no trouble applying to basically every story we've come across, um, because it just seems well, to be consistent. Whenever there, a, uh, whenever there is anything where it's like, oh, I haven't really thought about that part before, then you just try and integrate that into the framework. Yeah, and it's not about, um, because like, I was just thinking about the other part of this, it's like, oh, that system isn't objective. It's like, it's not necessarily, it's doing your best to just remove personal bias, the, the, the super important part of it being objective. Yeah. Objectivity is not an appeal to absolute truth, and it never was. And anyone who tries to use that, no. You slap them down and say, nope, no, it's not what it is. You when... thinking it is is wrong, and it's never been that. I don't know who told you that or where you got the idea, but it's not right. Bad. Like when, it's, you know, if two people are like, this character is too smart to have made this mistake, and you're like, no, that mistake matches their flaws if you look at the earlier parts of the film, and then they go, no, if you look at the earlier parts of the film, they're too intelligent, they make this decision, this decision, their awareness of the, And then someone else goes, well, I think they would have made the decision, because I, I like I like it. I like that they made that decision. Both of those people should be like, can you... Can, just, 
up for a minute, okay? Like, I appreciate that, but it's <laughs> like... Go away. We're trying to have a talk. And it sometimes, I don't know, is totally just going to be what the what the tentative explanation yeah. is. Or uh, the, the equivalent I, in that scenario. I feel like they would have made that decision. I just don't... I haven't got anything more than that. You know, like, all right. Ron, it doesn't really mean that perspective is invalid, necessarily. No. Perspective itself, it's just that the... Uh, you know, the justification can, isn't there yet. Yeah, you, you can irrationally feel something that happens to also be true, but that's not a good system well, no, to no, use. No, no. It could just be you're not aware, aware of the... It may well be that uh, what you, you, you... There's something that's clicked that's wrong. You just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, or well. click that's, that's right, right, and you haven't figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that happens where you'll be like... I mean, damn, like, that happens with movies where it's like... Something I'd like, say that happens every time I watch something. Uh, I'll be like... Ooh, that didn't sit well. What was the problem there? Yeah, and and the, the interesting part oftentimes is you figure out a reason, then you're like, is that the only reason? You know, like Starkiller base. It's like, is it just the one thing that's stupid about that base, or is there loads of things? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, the funny thing is, in my, what I've learned more so is I should trust my, uh, instinct on that. Whenever I'm like, huh, something isn't, I feel like there's something that isn't working here, but I can't figure out what it is. Hmm. Um, every time, or well, many of the times that I dismiss that thought, I eventually realize, oh wait, no, that was a, uh, yeah, there, there was something there that was worth looking into. But yeah, um, there's, there's just loads of uh, arguments I find to be really strong for this, uh, but one of them, of course, is that everybody, when they compliment or, uh, criticize a movie's story, it's almost always how it relates to some other aspect, in terms of it its has to be. continuity, what it's else? always that, every time. It's funny because, like, uh, again, with the conversation with, with Duma, he was just like, you, you you try and go strictly for, like, consistency, but then, and he was like, how do you account for, like, drawing, you know, lots of meaning or, or connective parts out of different elements when it's just, like, whether or not something makes sense? And it's just like, that's the thing, a lot of people don't even understand how the system works. Because I, I, I hear that and I'm like, what do you mean? We talk about it all the time. Was what a lot of people about, just go by right? what they've been told that one time. There's, there's some a lot of it is like, know what they're talking about. character did X, which is in line with how character did X before. And it's like, that sounds very dry. And it's like, <laughs> well, yeah, because that's not really how we deliver it. Like, you know, why would, why would anyone do it? Like, why, why, why did they all make these choices? It's like, it's, it's an opportunity to tell a story while also being critical slash praiseworthy. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the drive behind all of us talking about any of this stuff is usually that we love it, but we're going to be a bit oh, more um, yeah. emotional in delivery than just going, Tony Stark did this. That is annoying. But I mean, you could also do that as a robot. I you could. I... How, uh, the characters were fun and interesting. Yes, I, yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed how the action scenes were crazy and cool. Like, you can... And you can do you can do this with everything. Like it's, it's really not that simple. Well, and funnily enough, then just to be even like to to get out the edges even more. If there were a channel that was extremely robotic and delivered everything robotically, and but it was strictly about what makes sense and what doesn't, still a good chance I'd be watching that channel if it were really good. Yeah, if it well, was really just, really uh, interesting, then I might watch it too. Yeah, and then I'd be annoyed because of the delivery, but I'd be like, man, it's good, really good info. I could see them maybe trying to make it a gimmick of some kind if the voice is satisfying to listen to, but it's robotic in nature. Maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's that's definitely you got to hear it to know it mm -hmm. sorts of things. But maybe. Have you heard of the channel RM Military History? They do a podcast covering new and old war movies objectively and get some amazing guests as well. They are a criminality. Oh, sorry. Well, I think they mean criminally, criminally undersub channel. Undersub so, yeah. They did okay. say criminality, but <laughs> Crim they are criminality unsubscribed. Yeah. So that you stay away. They're, ooh, they'll they'll be on a list. I do not know of that channel, but I'm glad that people are partaking in the 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 black magic and the dark arts of objective media criticism. Ah. I'm in the middle of season two of Buffy. How many times is this particular event thing gonna happen? That happens a couple times. It's annoying when it does, yeah. Um, I don't think it has much of a drastic effect on the plot, but it's still annoying. Finally, this movie deserves to be ripped apart. Also, hello, Madvocate. I really liked your Flash videos. 
This is Black Widow, the gal who can survive anything. Well, sort of. The gal who can survive anything. I Anx advise you try not to kill her. <laughs> Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Proverbs 1225 NIV. Yeah, it certainly can. It certainly can. Yeah. Uh, GW demonetized a 40k fan animator and removed their Patreon after they turned down working with them under a paid service. Warhammer Plus. GW are bad. Games Workshop. Take, take no down one the... likes... How do they take down a no. Patreon? I guess it would be a matter of um, how, like, it's presented. You know, like, what are you technically supporting via the uh, Patreon? If it's directly, like, making Warhammer stuff and they don't want people, like, doing... You know, yeah, that, but I, I, I'm not sure. I just, everyone, that's... like, nobody likes Games Workshop. Even I know that. It's not, like, any Warhammer fan. You know, it's neat and all, but... Even though they're the people I who know, are responsible for yeah, creating it. They own, they own, like, the license on, you know, Warhammer stuff, and everyone hates them. And they constantly, you know, there's, there well, I mean, is if a... If they're taking down, like, fan creations and stuff that people really like, it's, that's, uh, that's yeah, not going to help them out. It's one of those like sure technically yeah but it's like it's such a bad move in terms of PR and really expanding the brand because all well, it is is like you could if you made this and drummed up all this interest you know it's it's a, it's a tactically real wrong move even if it's it probably uh, is like legally doable well, this is I've been thinking about a bit uh, because of Halo is uh, remember back when Halo like had a really active like everybody was making those machinimas that, that, yeah. like, that should be good for your game. You know, Absolutely. Like, when you have a really mm -hmm. engaged, active community creating fan content around your work. Like, why? Did, it's the reason why, like, Hero Shooter became so popular is because when you have, like, these clearly defined characters with a unique look, that just encourages people to create, like, fan art. You don't want to That's... fucking destroy that. I mean, first of all, I think, you know, you should just let that shit flourish because it's a good creative outlet for people. People can find work through it. But, I mean, it's beneficial for you. Because it means people are engaged with the your creation. Yeah, but, uh, yeah they are. Damn. They they do all kinds of stuff that fans absolutely hate and despise. And the community behind Warhammer is many decades old, and they absolutely love that universe. And the fan stuff that has been made for that series is maybe one of the most extensive ever uh, when it comes to fandoms and the way that they've handled their intellectual property or their their copyright and stuff is just it pisses everyone off everyone hates games workshop and even i know that damn uh guys she's part spider she's fine yeah oh, no. yeah that's so i didn't that's think of that your your video more is pretty you gotta say probably age poorly if you haven't accounted for things like that Jeez. that's true i can put an annotation in oh wait no i can't no, because I took that out for some reason. Yeah, I'm assuming there's, there's some kind of back-end issue with it or something. I don't know why that was taken out. It fucking, uh, do you remember, like, YMS had loads of corrections on videos with annotations, and they just all got wiped out as yeah. far as I know, anyway. Fuck. Damn. And there's all those, uh, those, those little games people made on YouTube via annotations. They're all gone. Yeah, like the Choose Your Own Adventure stuff, yeah. Well... Wesker voice. I don't need anyone else. I have big balls. I don't think he says <laughs> yeah. that, but uh, so, all right. I think well, that's certainly the video where he says that. I remember that. That's um, video I've not seen, and I feel worse oh, having not seen it. Have you not seen the Do It Live uh, thing for Wesker? Do It Live for Wesker? No. No. Re really. Okay. No. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah, you should you should watch that. It's it's funny shit. It's the voice actor drop it in our little out. group chat, and I'll check it out. One more. <laughs> yeah, let me let me see if I can find it. Taskmaster is a Swiss Army tentacle blade. This movie was somehow worse than Winter Soldier. Um, I think we concluded that, right? I feel like it's probably worse than Winter Soldier. Yeah. Because at least Winter Soldier had Black Widow in it continuity as in as in like something positive that we pulled from it um, yeah yeah exactly and there was like um i think the hand-to-hand -hand fight that steve and bucky had was was pretty good um 
And, and well, yeah. <laughs> was, except I think a gun disappears. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. he has a pistol the whole time and he just doesn't use it. Um, so yeah, that, yeah. Eh, you know, eh. But there's some parts in the beginning that are pretty good, like oh yeah, the first like, oh well yeah, yeah. <laughs> dialogue okay. stuff. The point know? is, I don't think there's anything redeemable in Black Widow like at all Black from memory. Just monster. Yeah, because from the moment I was moment... gonna say Willa had a cute pig, but it's like oh, but then they like almost choked it to death. Yeah, that was. I guess it's so good. He made it okay. Was horrible. That was I guess so in the horrible. end he didn't choke, so that that's how low the hey, bar this, is. It's um... like, well, they didn't murder the pig in the end. They they only tortured it. And it's like, is that good? I, eh. A great example of uh, the thing we're talking about on, I think the last EFAP was uh, someone super chat about how like Marvel can't even make, they don't know the difference between heroes and villains. I'm like, yeah, she's uh, one of the worst people in the MCU. Um, uh, the mum, and like the film is clearly doesn't give a shit. Man, the amount of her list of crimes. Oh. Yeah, she's she's a monster. <laughs> Absolutely. Enough. Yeah. Oh well. If you don't, uh, hold on. I need I need to turn my AC. It's actually kind of getting a little warm. Give me a moment. Spoilers for Loki season two. It's garbage. I haven't even got well, it. Well, we, Is it we are in the future. Uh, yeah, they announced it at the end of season one, right? But okay, better question, not, have they filmed anything yet? I don't think so, no. <sighs> um, Black Widow was worse than Captain Marvel. Give me grief about it, Chad, I dare you. Um, I can't remember. I think so. Um, the, stuff about, it's, the thing about Captain well, Marvel... Captain Marvel doesn't assassinate Captain Marvel. She's just a very thin character. Yeah, there's nothing really to do... Like could really have done anything and there's no real way to say no 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 she wouldn't do that yeah right, just a... well, yeah and i guess there's a level of um black widow retroactively hurts a character i would consider to have been quite strong pretty persistently her story was complete her story was complete and then they kind of added in a thing that kind of ruins it honestly fucks <laughs> with loads of it and it makes her look like an idiot makes her look mm -hmm. like a stupid asshole idiot basically yeah um, when Nat left Taskmaster dying to check on his sister, I thought she died. She legit left her dying until the other widows showed up. I laughed. Um, when Nat left Taskmaster dying to check on his sister. I don't think she left her dying. I think it was after she did the floop juice. Oh, the, yeah, she's fine. She's just lying down or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. But yeah, she's just been given the uh, mental break stuff. Um, but like, when is the Space Jam 2 breakdown coming out? I think everyone's forgotten about that movie now. I think yeah. everyone has forgotten about that it movie. It sort of came and went. Probably Yes, it did. I think. Based on what I've heard, yes. How would you objectively rate the writing of Jaws? It's my favorite movie, and I think it's very close to a 10. At the very least, a 9? You've had movies? I don't know if... That would work for EFAP movies, but I've always known Jaws to be really strong. As far as I know, um, I haven't seen it in a very, 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 very long time, but... The only yeah, caveat being, sharks don't do what that shark was doing. Like it, That one does. Yeah, that's the thing. You kind of just go with internal consistency on that. It's like, this shark is doing this. But, uh, yeah, because shark attacks are just not a common cause of... No, like, well, they have less reasons to be afraid of sharks than other animals. Um, you know. But sharks are really are cool, and they have a name that just implies ferociousness, I guess. Maybe that's the chicken and the egg sort that of thing. That's got tons of teeth. Oh man, the teeth shit is like, edgy the hedgy. <laughs> like, but it's a real it, thing. It is edgy the hedgy if like, yeah, if, if, I don't know, when God was creating all the animals, it's like, how edgy do I want to make the shark? Three rows of teeth? Nah, four. <laughs> Let's it's do four, it. Right? The great ride shark have four rows of, like, lower teeth. I don't know, I just, when I first saw it, I'd never forget that shit. I was like, wow, that, look at that. That's just one of those crazy fantasy creatures. Yeah. Um, how about short Face Bear versus Sabretooth? Hey, remember that? The... I do remember that. Yeah. I, uh, what do I... we, how much do we know about, like, the strength and size of Sabretooths? I, uh, I don't know anything about Sabretooth. I was going to say, I don't know anything, but I assume they've got info on that, right? Uh, let me, let me take a look. Sabertooth, uh, 
It says saber-toothed tiger, but it's not a tiger. It's not a. It's not a cat. Smilodon. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. hmm. Well, so uh, wait, are they okay? So no, wait, they are. Are they act? Wait, I'm getting confused now. They are cats. They are cats. They're just not tigers. <laughs> um. Hmm. There were a few different types of uh. They were around the size of modern big cats, but more robustly built. Uh, a reduced lumbar region, high scapula, which is shoulders, short tail, broad limbs, and relatively short feet. Um, I guess the thing that might help them out is that their teeth are so large. Saber two tigers are fucking awesome. Look at this. Look at this. I, I remember looking at this painting once, and I was like, man, this is an awesome painting. Look at that thing. It's awesome. Oh yeah, dude, they are they are cool looking. <laughs> It's, what a cool animal. Yeah, so, um... It looks like, uh... Yeah, they're about... Hmm. And, and against what a short-nosed bear. I yes. feel like that's another... Because I think that's what I've come around on, right? Is the reason why I thought tigers might have a chance is because they're enormous. Like, they are the largest cat. Whereas if this is the size of a, a big cat, like a regular one, I'm still wondering if it's going to have the strength necessary to overpower... I, um, hmm. but yeah. I don't know. What we what we should do is we should Jurassic Park this shit, bring him back, yep. make him fight. So wow. this once and for all. Isn't that a isn't that like a thing that's been theorized that like mammoths, woolly mammoths, we have access to uh, enough information that we could recreate them? As far as I know, I think I have their uh, I've heard that as well. Um, yeah. which is interesting. Uh, interesting well, thing about being able to revive extinct species. The interesting thing about mammoths is that they are... Uh, I remember it was in a Kurzgesagt video. Uh, woolly mammoths, when the pyramids were being built, woolly mammoths were still around in places right. in the world. That's true. And um, I think there was that movie 10,000 BC where... Well, that, yeah. They, they have like both of them in the movie. And I, I that movie's probably super fucking absurd. But that was one of the well, things where I was like, hey, yeah, the technology right, is... Yeah. There's also remember the remember everyone, the pyramids are fuck old. Pyramids so. are very old. That's one of those, because it's, again it was in that Kurzgesagt video, that uh, ancient Rome, like the Roman Empire, you know, that the, the sort of period that we think of of the Roman Empire's reign uh, is closer to now than it was to when the pyramids were built. That's how old the pyramids are. Yeah, they're like 1900s or something. Ridiculous. I, yeah. I'm not sure... That it's like 4,500 years old, I think the Great Pyramid is. Like, it is super, super old. It's insane. And it's not even the first pyramid. They had to try a couple... Snefru, right? And his boys. They had they had to try a couple times until they got it right. That's how you got, like, the Step Pyramid, and then... Oh, it would suck if you uh, died building the shitty one. Pyramid. Um, well, that was one of his... Apparently, that was one of Snefru's sort of concerns uh, that I think we're aware of, is that... He tried the first one because you got you got to do these things way in advance because it takes a while to finish them. Uh, so he did the first one, didn't work out. Then they changed it, and that one was better. And after the second one doesn't work, you're like, eh, yeah, we are on a timer here. You know, this is going to send me that. So they um, got the third one right, and it stands to the, they all stand to this day. But man, as I'm just now scrolling through this Wikipedia, sort of uh, just tumbling down, just looking at. Megafauna as a categorization. It's like, damn, sucks that we don't get to see those. Um. Oh yeah, but ultimately, I haven't seen Jaws in so long that I couldn't say. Um. Rise of Skywalker scene. Somehow, Jeb returned. As if that wouldn't Jeb. be great news. Jeb returned through Morbius. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, I know this isn't a surprise, but the new Space Jam movie is very bad. Also, if the money was identical, would you rather write for a season 3 of Mando or Batwoman? Or would you rather make staff changes? Hiring, firing, etc. Oh, what, so you, you want to write the thing yeah. or change all the people who are making it? I guess it depends I would, on how much the writing gets fucked with, right? Yeah, sure it would. You'd have to get new writers. 
I mean, I guess what I would say is that if I got an opportunity to write for a show, I would definitely prefer to write Mando than Batwoman. Like me both too. of you ignored Absolutely. me, what the fuck? I said this this doesn't work unless we know how much our writing's being fucked with, so the choice well, is... I, I know, I was just responding to what Fringy had said, and I'm agreeing with him. Wait, no, sorry, there. I thought, well, I mean, even, I even with what you said, right, because you were saying you get to write for it, or alternatively you pick, like, a team that gets yeah. to write for it, right? Yeah, and I said, but the, 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 the us writing for it doesn't really matter if our writing's ignored. Uh, oh, I just... I, guess I, I thought it was part of the question that if you get to write for it, it goes into the show. Okay, well, well, in I mean, that if, case, I would take the writing easily. Because I would take. I a... I assume it's part of the question. Like you get to write for it, it means that you. Well, so the reason why I wasn't sure about that is because I feel like the question's too easy at that point. Because I think that if you get control over the writing, you can write the ship hardcore on Batwoman, even with the shitty production values and well, the actors. Oh yeah, sure. Because yeah, sure, of how important about. writing is. But. If, if I could choose the writers for a project, it's like, well, shit, I mean, I could pick some really interesting uh, characters to to write for, um, you know, write for one of them. Well, you shows. essentially end up with old Doctor Who at that point, which is something that people beloved. Like, it, you know, it's like the production values were embarrassing, but the people who were behind it, sometimes you even get really shitty actors, but the writing is what's keeping people in, you know? Uh, people are super passionate I think about those. Doctor Who, TNG, and Buffy share all of that in their older stuff. Like... Right. Oh god, you can um, see the cardboard, but it's like, that's fine. The writing. TNG's budget definitely got better in later. See, the first season you could tell. Like, with the, well, yeah, Doctor Who did and Buffy did as well. And, and, to, and I guess, I don't know, I guess the, the similarity between Buffy and TNG is that when the writing started out, it was bad. Um, but I don't know whose writing started out bad. There's... So, as far as I'm aware, the earliest seasons of Doctor Who and TNG and Buffy all share, like, this cringe. And this stuff that's like, eh, it's not working very well. But then they, like, iron it out and at the same time it's getting more popular and thus production values are improving as well. Like, it, they're all shows that had to, like, work to get higher and higher in respect and production. But I, I would argue that the foundation for a lot of them is going to be a script that's drawing people in. Um... Meanwhile, there's stuff now, like The Force Awakens or Jurassic World, where it's like, look at the fucking scale, look at the spectacle. Like, what story are you telling? It's like, it doesn't matter. And yet, but, and yet, it really is, like, the fucking most important part. Well, I, it, what is legacy when it comes to storytelling? Most of the time, it's really... Like, when everyone talks about Lord of the Rings, yes, we talk about the Balrog, but, like, we're more invested in talking about the characters. Well, yeah, I mean... we just say, there... yeah, in the yeah. The Balrog is fucking great. I mean, I mean, we got a, an example that I guess is becoming more relevant again. Avatar, technically, man, even even today, still super impressive. But I mean, nobody like, you know, the passion isn't quite on the same level as uh. Well, and it, I mean, it's a matter of like you think about films of old that were technical achievements at the time. Uh, and it's not so much anymore. But their legacy remains because they were great stories. Yeah. It's always uh... going to be cool. It's, I don't know, how long can your love for a thing remain when you're saying, like, the CGI is fucking amazing? Like, like if Infinity War didn't have much of a story to it, Thanos' CGI is like, yeah, we, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Well, hell, I mean, you think about video games, right? When, you, you know, video games technically have improved tremendously. Um, but, I mean, there are a lot of people who still, I mean, damn, like, people, people, like, getting emotionally... You know, they're getting those reactions out of, like, a PlayStation 1 game with its archaic... Ah, uh, I don't want to call them archaic, because it's its own style, but, you know, on, like, those old pre-rendered cutscenes, and still, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's what's lying it is, what's beneath it. The heart, it's the narrative, the characters, the writing. Uh, your thoughts on the Steam Deck. Love you guys. Hi, I have no thoughts on the Steam Deck. Really, do I. I don't have one. I haven't read any reviews of them. Seems really cool, though, to be able to have that on the go. Yeah, it does. If only it were available in Australia, but it's not. For some reason. Is it? Well, can you get it like secondhand from like an eBay or whatever? Or? Uh, I could, but I mean, I think I would prefer to wait until it is. Um, That's really weird. Available. They wouldn't have. Like, it... well, because it's in America and it's in Europe. I, so, you know, like, what? Yeah, it feels like they missed one out yeah. there, uh, or maybe more. But... Um, 
Yeah, so it's available in the United States, Canada, the European Union, and the UK. Um, which, I, I mean, I guess, I mean, it makes sense, I believe, for all those, but I feel like Australia at this point, or at least, you know, like Australia and New Zealand, like that region yeah. should be bunched in. Maybe Australia isn't real, I don't know. This is yeah, but Fringy, I, f I feel, Fringy, that you're a little biased here, <laughs> so I'm not sure if that... Uh, um, well, I, I feel like I might be a little biased, but I mean, you know, like... I, it makes sense to me. Australia is a market, and it's a big gaming market. Well, then explain Hotline Miami too. Yeah. Look, all right, that's not that's not my fault, is it? <laughs> Clearly your fault. As the representative of Australia, you have a lot of explaining. No, to I'm you. not. I'm the represent representative of Fringy, the, the plague doctor. That's it. Fringy, the plague doctor. Yeah, who makes goo in his underground dungeon. Um. You don't see many above ground dungeons, do you? I don't think it can be an above ground dungeon. I think a, a dungeon is definitionally necessarily like, like it necessarily would have to be. It, it would it, in order for that to even I think sort of like get to that level, it would have to be deep in some sort like a castle. Well, where it's a big castle and it's deep inside of it, I and it never gets mean, any yeah. sunlight. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, because a dungeon, according to uh, uh, according to Merriam-Webster and Wikipedia, which are both here is a dark, usually underground prison. So not necessarily, but usually. Hmm. Alrighty. Hmm. Yeah. I also feel like dungeon has more, because it, it, it means prison, game but I, I feel like, lot, um, yeah. I think dungeon at this point just means like an underground place or labyrinth more so than a prison. Uh, yeah, almost oh, like it's more of a list. As well. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like dungeon has an, implication that it's an aesthetic i kinda think like so. how kind of like how rpg um, doesn't really mean role-playing game so much as it means a loose set of attributes that a game has sort of um, well yeah because works. all games make you role play in a sense right when you're playing uncharted you are playing the role of nathan drake but rpg more so means you make choices about who your character is going to be in some shape or form God, EFAP only doing film analysis instead of the thing that made them great. Super chat catch up. Hey, well, we got a fucking shit ton of them on the way. Humble beginnings. You had a lot of those, yeah. I'm still gonna space them out, but, uh, yeah. Just, just yeah, get them all don't. done. I do like my discussions, alright? That writing one is still one of my favorite episodes. Eh. Yeah. Um, why does Southpaw hate Civil War? Nuke this hot take right now, Mola. He just revealed it on Ecom yesterday. You know, it's objectively good. To be fair, uh, I've said this since the beginning of EFAP. Civil War is just hated by a lot of people. It's a very commonly, like, chat on movie in the MCU. To the point where YMS and ER, two people I very much respect in terms of their perspective on, on media, who very much value continuity in the same way I do, both thought that Civil War was shit. Um, you know, it's it's really not an uncommon position. It seems like the much more common perspective on like the Russo films taken as a whole is Winter Soldier or Infinity War are yeah. usually the ones that people cite as the best, not Civil War. People see Civil War as like the the peak of the MCU becoming sludge, uh, which is kind of funny, right? Like, it's well, for considering us, where we are yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> they well, because threw, they would they say just like, threw in all the characters. Yeah, they, yeah, they would say Moon Knight like and Loki are evidence of non-sludge. Look how crazy and awesome and, <laughs> and, and fucking different this Loki. is. Egyptian man, the TVA. <laughs> so, Whoa, that's so amazing. And we're just sitting here like, Loki. what do you mean? You are Loki. crazy. You are Loki crazy, is man. Loki not sludge. Can you imagine? But um, yeah, if you follow Twitter sentiment, they'll say Civil War looks like crap. Uh, first of all, and that's like the most important thing to talk about, and you're like, okay. And they'll be like, they threw everyone together because they'll sell tickets, and nobody has anything significant happen to them. And then I hate it when people say, like, the Accords didn't even matter, ultimately. It's just like, ugh. That's it's not Civil, Civil War's War. fault. <laughs> Civil War didn't do it's that. Fault the people who came after who just ignored well, it. Well, the people who came after, including the Russos themselves. Yeah, the that's Russos ignored so it more than anybody else, really. Like, the <laughs> Endgame's <laughs> job was to shepherd in all of the things to come next. That's one of the pieces of sympathy I have for all Phase 4. It's like, yeah, the Russos fucked you guys over. Well, it was kind of, they left you with a lot of very difficult writing challenges to overcome. The yeah, snap you could have, if that mystical director writer out there made that film where it's 
uh, just the... I think we even said a season of TV and every episode is just another civilian dealing with another situation that's fucking horrifying slash. Nice and even the, throw in an episode of someone who benefits it intensely from the blip. They're just yeah, like, like somebody who, I don't know, like a company, half of the board, and then they're like, this is my chance. Like, yeah. I, can, I can assert dominance rise through the ranks, gobble up all the cheap stock, you know? That, yeah, man, and, um, I, I know that people have been shitting on that um that TikTok that went around where the dude's like, yeah, imagine if we had more like avant garde like indie films in the MCU. It's like, look, all right, I know that that sentiment is cringe, but like the MCU absolutely could do stories that aren't just about the superhero. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, it would be, and it could be well, valuable. So, so right, you know about that the video that went around? No. The idea is, someone's the the, the claim is made like, for fuck's sake. Uh, art house films, avant-garde films, all these indie films, low-budget films, they're all getting squashed by the MCU, bad, 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 bad. And then he says, well, how about the MCU started making movies that were those movies, right? Because they've got the market and the position and the ability to be unsafe, at least to some degree. So what if cool. we had a movie where it's like the main character is like a priest who's dealing with the fact that Norse gods, Egyptian gods, Roman gods, Greek gods, whatever, that they all turn out to be real. It's like... Yeah. How does he deal with that? What does it what does it say about his faith and culture? And he goes through a whole bunch of examples that are very much character driven and specific and not about a superhero doing whatever. And he got roasted hardcore by the entire internet for that. Um Really? That's not fair. That's a totally well, fine that's ridiculous. I I I, th I think I, my position is that had what he said came true to, to actually happen, people would celebrate the fuck out of it. Absolutely. I don't no, know I why, don't, people, why no. uh, I think the reason why it was um I think the reason why the response was so negative is because I think on its face it's like, holy shit, why can't you just like watch those films that exist now in large supply, you know, of, of stories that are Yeah, I think it's that plus what he's suggesting would make Marvel basically cinema. Like Marvel's gonna get yeah, to the point it would, where it's it would everything. Be the, further monopol the further monopolization of and of course I guess there's this also just a perspective that I think is fair that I don't know that I would trust Marvel to make something like that and make it worthwhile. Well, I think baked in um, to his premises that they're doing well while making them, right? Like, it's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, like, that's kind of... So I feel like that video, when you look at it, it's like, ugh. But the sentiment of, how about Marvel, you don't make films that are exclusively about superheroes, and then you tell stories in that world about other people. That would have produced... I mean, in the hands of really talented people, that could yield some great stuff. Um, makes you wonder, hopefully, right? Hopefully, though, not just to gobble up all films, because I don't want that. Fuck no. If Marvel were making exclusively good things, like great things, like 9 to 10 out of 10s every single time, and then they started passing over like $10 million budget movies to smaller directors and stuff, just, and they're all in the MCU, and they're all perfectly in continuity, like, which. I just, I, I do think that we would eventually have the conversation of like, it's a bit dodgy though, they have a lot of control, but I actually think the offset of, yes, but they're making incredibly inspirational artwork. Like, mm -hmm. huh. and they're providing the writers well, and directors the... opportunities where they wouldn't be having them or whatever, you know. Yeah, it's like the MCU becomes working. more like very more loose in terms of can kind of like Warhammer we're talking about. Like there are just general events and things like that, but there's so much. You have a lot of creative freedom to sort of work within that universe. Um, maybe that's just the way they need to go, almost. Where, because I, I mean, technically the MCU is a thing, but. It's not a thing, you know. It's it's all just. It's been so botched at this point yeah, that what you know, you're just like fuck it. Just, well, the fact that someone matter. in our community was like, "Why are you treating Moon Knight as though it shares continuity?" and it's like, in a in a sense, that's kind of funny. Like, because yeah, what whole the fuck point, does that, that was all appeal? Yeah, that yeah. was the whole point. But at this point, you can't even tell what shares continuity with how much it contradicts itself. It's just like, I'm guessing it all does, but they just don't give a shit. That's, that's how it works now. The fact, oh, dude, the fact that you have a director of a, the newest and probably biggest film for a while for, for Marvel hasn't even seen the thing he's making a sequel to. That is not saying it. Absolutely insane. And um, I find it weird. I saw some people saying it's like a Chad move from, from Sam Raimi. I'm just like, damn, dude, if it was someone else. If Peyton Reed said that he hadn't yeah. watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, his own film, like he hadn't watched it, or if he hadn't watched Civil War or anything, or he hadn't watched Loki, considering Kang's gonna be in it, people would be jumping down his throat. Part of what uh, I respect Avengers for so much is that it feels as though the person who made it watched all the Phase 1 movies. Because... Well, it's, uh, 
yeah, have been it's following on. Elements. Yeah, I, I, that's the reason why I uh, I think that Civil War is much more an Avengers movie than Age of Ultron because a lot of what it is about is rooted in the stuff that happened before. Whereas like Age of Ultron kind of just comes along and does its own thing that doesn't pull a whole lot from what came before. Yeah, and um, um, that's, that's why the airport good. scene, I've always just never agreed with a common take of like, the airport scene is a goofy, nonsense action scene that's meant to just delay the movie because no nothing actually comes of it. Like, I was so impressed when I was watching the movie that they put all the characters in the positions I really felt they would line up with. Yeah. And then, of it's, course, it's great. the whole premise is we're here to stop you from running away, not kill you. Nobody's trying to kill each other. It's a different parameter for a fight. Except, yeah, avoiding it. Because this, this is the moment, it's like, well, wait, one person is trying to kill one person. You're like, that's true. Black Panther is trying to kill Bucky. But that's for very specific reasons. That's the only one that's trying to kill somebody. And he does try several times in that fight. I wonder what they can do with that, him wanting to kill someone. I, w I wonder if that could develop or change. Hmm. I'm sure once he gets his own movie, because for now I'm just pretending that never happened, it'll be great. Black Panther 2. Charles was awesome in Civil War. Was well, his powerhouse. He didn't give a fuck what anyone thought. He was there to <laughs> do whatever. The... This is the thing. Um, I don't get you. I'm Clint. I don't care. <laughs> the, the the whole like, you know, like I, I'm gonna fucking kill him. Like he killed my dad. I'm gonna kill him. And it's just like, oh, the reflection in Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exact same shit too. Because well, in the sense that it's not Bucky's fault at all. Because well, one of them was framed, then, the other one was mind control. Like, Charlie gets that information. His chat was Zemo. It's like, yeah, because Whoa. he doesn't want to become Zemo, isn't it? Not, vengeance has consumed you. It's consuming them, and I'm not going to let it. Cons uh, this one, you know, that's really impressive considering that that's like the first time we got introduced. We don't have a lot of history for him. We've got a really strong arc for T'Challa in that movie. Yeah. He's not in it that much. He's not, well, he's not in it that much, but yet he feels like he's in it a lot more than he really is because of his presence. Yeah. yeah, and what um, it means to got a good actor a with good oh, lines. Yeah, but, yeah, and... is, is like it's it's pitch perfect. It was pitch perfect casting. It, it's a, it's doubly a shame that Black Panther was so shit, considering that he's died now. Like in his own movie, it's just such a lackluster, you know, outing that you're like, ah, man, that, that's yeah, that's great introduction, shame. shitty solo adventure, a couple of weird things happen in Endgame, whatever, and then he's just gonna be he has to be written out with a throwaway line. Kind. Man, that, that's you gotta tread carefully with that one. Um, with, oh yeah, they, I'm sure they've been thinking for ages how to do it. Because man, with the well, shit they can do with yeah. Luke Skywalker, I mean, God, I, God it, knows. I nah, I don't, I don't think I. Hmm, I'm not. Well, because the thing is, is that there was a lot of conversation between people of whether to recast Chala. I think there's like that seems to be a real hardline split, like. You got some people who are who are saying like, well, it would be it would be better to respect the character, so like to have it go on and not have that be the end for the character. And of course, other people, it's like, well, who can follow him up? You know, that should be a character that's kind of left with him. I, I uh, as much as that film in terms of production seems to have been a nightmare, and I'm not really expecting it to be good. I, uh, I certainly would not want to be the person who has to direct that movie. That uh, there's a lot of things that you need to juggle. Brian Coogler, right? He's coming one. back? Or is it, it is. Coogler, yeah, yeah they, he came back for it. They need to do what they should have done with Leia, where in Rise of Skywalker it opens with this grand funeral and an incredible eulogy and all of these think, characters are that, there. Yeah. That's that, what they that, should have done for yeah, Leia, and, you make, and, and they you didn't. make her death, like, push something forward. Her having died means something for the universe, and Absolutely. that's Absolutely. Make it important. Yeah, mention it here and there. Say that well, they're the I, character I think... impacted things when they were alive, that they're an inspiration. You can always have their statues and stuff in the future. Like, they're not alive anymore, but they still have a presence of any sort. I think that, yeah, have T'Challa have, have a presence throughout the film, even though he's not, you know, in it, that, that it's super important and recognized. Which I imagine they're probably going to do. I guess the thing is, is that now, especially after episode 5 of Moon Knight, it's like, it seems like no matter what you would want to do narratively, there's always going to be a thing where it's like, yeah, but we got to bring it back to the plot with the fight scenes and the villain. Like we got to, yeah. we got to move back to that. We got to, we got to get back to that. Like we can't, we can't spend too long being slow and contemplative. 
and character focus. We gotta get back to the, the action and the fights and the mythology and setting up the new movies. And I don't know why I would expect that Black Panther 2 would be safe from that uh, influence. Who knows? And that's not even considering all of the things they gotta take from all the other movies and things happening right now, and the blip. Like, it's... Yeah, the absolute blip chaos. Wakanda, right? That's, that's one of those ones where it's like, damn, like, we, we gotta know what Wakanda was doing uh, during the blip, because Wakanda has the means to really keep everything, you know, in order. But, um, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I, uh... So, yeah, I guess to maybe come to some form of an answer, I have immense respect for Civil War for its... its approach in the same way that I do with Avengers. It, um, the amount of work that went into uh, keeping characters in line from their prior stories to actually make a full story out of... It's essentially the end of the arc uh, for, for Iron Man and Steve going different directions. It's like explosive as opposed to sort of declarative of what they're at. Is it, you combine the the overt sort of plot stuff with, with everything that's been going on with them for movies on end. It's like, damn. Um, but yeah, a lot of really, really impressive work. I think there's room to, to be critical of a lot of the smaller parts of the movie. Um, it's just that it, uh, in terms of continuity, I just I wouldn't be able to say it scores anything but pretty solidly uh, for characters. But I do intend to do a deep dive for that film one day and uh, be interested to see if I can find things that make it better or worse. But it tends to do pretty well, and I've seen it like a many times. Um, but then again, you know, I recently rewatched Interstellar, and it was worse <laughs> than I remember. And worse. I've seen that movie a shit ton of times, unfortunately. That movie gets a black hole out of ten. Um, well, it's going to be brought up. I mentioned this fucking probably like eight, two years ago, but there's there's uh the audio commentary for Civil War uh is going to be referenced in TFA Part Six, where I'm talking about how people make these movies and um they talk about during the film that uh when they would like write everything out they would go and visit um robert Downey jr to ask him how he feels about the scenes and to run them out with him with obviously him doing the lines and then them playing different characters just to take input from what he believes tony would say and do based on everything up to that point and uh, yeah they said i think for some time it was a weekly thing they would they would write portions of the script and go to his house and do all of that just to make sure. And I was just thinking about that compared with how Mark Hamill was treated, where he's quoted as saying he took issue with the script and Ryan ignored him. Dad, fuck me. You just remind me of that because that makes me sad as shit when you remind me of that. Last thing, to be definitive oh. here, just because Mark Hamill says it's a problem does not make it a problem, but to ignore him. To ignore him. Yeah. The guy who played him. Fucking decades, like, why would you even... Why? What, what, what? Well, just maybe ask and just run it by him, you know? Listen to what he has to say before you decide that you don't want to do anything. I hope it was worth it for you to deconstruct Star Wars. That's very clever of you. Um, well, look at it now. It's, uh, it's doing yeah. great. Yeah, you really... It's amazing how much damage one man did with one film. Yeah, I would argue a lot of this safe crap we're getting, where it's like, a Boba Fett show... Doing Boba Fett things. Like, I see that as a direct result of uh, LJ's insanity, where they were like, yeah, let's never experiment again. Well, yeah. That that would be... I, I don't blame these... Com I, first of all, I always try to keep in mind it's not my hundreds of millions that I'm gambling here. But, like, I don't really blame them after TLJ happens or, and they go, fuck, 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 fuck. We fucked up, man. We fucked up, man. And then they try and play it super duper safe. How much money did we lose? Oh, fucking hell, the projections say that we lost a shit ton of money. The Rise of Skywalker only made a billion. Thing. And nobody likes it. And nobody no one likes, likes it. it. Black Widow is a movie about birth control, putting women under weak men's control and selecting slash killing the wrong men. Hi, Raggy Boy. Hello. I don't think Black Widow ever had thoughts like that, come on. I'm just a mess. It's definitely going for like men controlling women. I get that. Uh, it's just executed horribly. As for the birth control stuff, they seem to just treat it as a fucking joke. Like uh, it was yeah. introduced by Age of Ultron. I can't remember if there's an earlier reference in that. I don't think so. So, and it was very serious. But then they were like, "Lol." 
Lol. How likely do you think the RE4 remake is not going to be better than the original? I'd say it's guaranteed. It depends who's making it. Um, I guess, like, well, it, like what team at Capcom. Be... Yeah, but I wonder if they have, like, different teams or It'll something. It'll be the Resident Evil 2 and 3 team, I imagine. The, uh... uh... I don't know. I feel like those games seem so far removed from what Resident Evil 4 was that I don't really? want them to... Reckon? Yeah, I don't get nearly the same well, vibes fair, and style I, and I, gameplay I, sort of stuff as I do from 4. To be fair, I didn't play 4. It's just that it seemed like Resident Evil 2, the whole point of the remake, was bringing it more in line with the modern third-person over-the-shoulder style. Come here, I don't think the Resident Evil 4 remake also. will be... <sighs> Resident Evil 4 has this great replayable arcadiness to it, and it's very tongue-in-cheek and self-aware, and it gives it this wonderful sort of feeling. It, it's got this great, it, this vibe it just sort of exudes when you play it, and, and it holds up to this day. And I worry, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to worry too much, because I always have the original that I can play, and I don't know. I don't think it will be as good as the original. What I will do is I will very eagerly await information on the remake because there is a chance that it is an excellent remake and it takes Resident Evil 4 and it it modernizes it and expands it in a way that technology can allow for now and gives us lots of content and cool things to do um, and, it, and it gives the same kind of feeling that 4 had, which I have not gotten from Resident Evil since. I don't know, I think they I think they tried to emulate it in parts, but then quickly gave up. But for those who have played Resident Evil 4, you know that it just has... It, it puts out this vibe. It, it's very self-aware and tongue-in-cheek, and it's great. Yeah, I would just have the standard cynicalness of like, I doubt it, but we'll see. Because remakes are often uh, disappointing in some way, because they'll change stuff, and you're just like, why the fuck did you change that? Because, yeah, it... Yeah, because I, I think they should do... Let's do the three big sections, the village, the castle, the island. Let's expand them. Let's spend more time in each one. Let's do better weapon balancing and you actually kind of fix some of the things that it doesn't do as well. Let's take some of the really big key moments, keep them, but change them a little bit, you know, so that you could tell that they're trying to do an old thing in a new way. You know, like whether it's the first El Gigante fight, whether it's some of the smaller things, like, like maybe a truck trying to ram you down a hill before the castle, whether it's, oh, do you think they're going to be allowed to put Ramon Salazar in it? Because he's a midget. Um, I don't know what they're gonna. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think the problem you could uh, end up be highlighting here is the same thing that happened with the Lion King, where don't change it unless you understand why they made it that way in the first place. If you don't understand it, yes. and you just change it, you're gonna fuck things up without realizing it. I think one of the best things that can happen is they put someone in charge who adores Resident Evil 4 plays that game and says oh now that we have all this technology and money oh, now we can do this now we can do this now we can add an extra section here now we can expand this game and really give people like a super duper resident evil 4 and but i don't know uh mootal we in chat desperately want an ho a hot tub a DS2 hot tub stream. We deserve a DS2 hot tub stream. Please correct this lack of DS2 hot tub streams. Irax. Are hot tub streams legal in Germany? Also, hello? I, I mean, so. hello? Oh, okay. All right, that's fair enough. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I want to see him play Dead Space 2 in the hot tub. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys reckon today's movies are becoming more like video games and video games are becoming more like movies? Um... Hmm. Maybe if you go like Rise of Skywalker, where the plot feels video gamey in terms of go here to get this, and then go here to get this, and then go, instead of spending time with characters, which is still something you could do in video games, but, but maybe that's what they mean? I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. If they're talking about video games becoming far more cinematic, I think we're already sort of seeing that happen a lot. Especially We've been seeing as... it for a while. Uh, like... Yes, we have. Um, 
and as for games becoming sorry and as for movies becoming more gamey maybe maybe more faithful to the source i also think we're starting to uh, starting to see that but luckily movies and games are so broad particularly games because i think the floor to get in on a game is a lot easier um in turn because you have so much control over what well, you do with movies but it seems like in games there's just so many things coming out all the time and all kinds of styles and genres and no one shies away from a particular thing that we're always going to have something um for the style you want Maybe it's always been the strength of games that I've always really admired. There's just always something for everyone. Does that not apply to movies? Yeah, but I just think to a greater degree it applies to games. Or books? I don't know about books. I, I, assume, I assume so with books, but I'm just not in the book kind of world. I don't I know. know what the book meta is. I know we've been under the assumption that Fringo was a plague doctor, but would it be too far-fetched to assume that his goo is actually some type of mutagen? He's in fact a mutated emu monstrosity, designed to mingle and learn our ways before the attack. Th that's absurd. Preposterous. Yeah, it is preposterous. No one should think that anymore. Inconceivable. Yeah, we could have put a, put a stop to that crazy conspiracy. Um, so great of Disney to help make a movie critical of Weinstein, but gave his assistant, who more than likely knew slash helped, a Star Wars project lol. Yeah. All the people who, like, approved of Weinstein dramatically and were close by him in a lot of ways, just like, they just, they just, I'm sure they're hoping to just link away. I was saying for the Jimmy Savile stuff, it was like, there's gotta be people who knew and who are just keeping their head down. I feel like slink away is an apt description for that, isn't it? Just yeah. like, kind of gradually shift out of the frame, you know? Like, just very Quietly slowly. Quietly get out, yeah. Yeah, without calling attention to themselves. Then of course it sucks because there probably are some people who are relatively close to these, these kinds of people and they didn't see anything, and at that point you can only feel guilty. Hmm. Because um, in that Jimmy Savile documentary, there were there were few people who the the discussions were just like I don't know. He was he was always really nice to me. Like and that was it. It was never anything else. It's just like eh. Uh, hero gents, on a solo road trip across the U.S., this podcast is just what I needed for the first ten hours. Also, hi rags. Ah, nice. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Thoughts on the Yelena character? She was the only one I liked and. I hated that she was debuted in this. That's the sister, right? Yes. Yeah, Yelena. Yeah, they were all crap. Sorry. <laughs> hey, this is before I made the Black Widow video, after. so I got a whole section on each character and why they're all terrible. So, all good. That's true. You do. They're all great. No. Terrible. If you haven't seen Black Widow, I envy you. Yeah, there's a few people out there, I think. Taped its vortex. You guys heard of slash watched Beast Stars? I think it did a neat job of using minor gore scenes to tell a good story while Invincible and Saw tried to make a story out of hardcore gore scenes. Also, hi. Hello. I know of Beast Stars. It's a show and a manga, but I don't know anything about it. Same. Um, and I wouldn't say that that's something. Invincible and Saw make story out of hardcore gore. They just have hardcore gore. Like, uh, Saw's story criticism is more so like how obsessed it is with trying to be twisty and stuff, and it usually ends up being funny. Like, I don't think they've ever made try to make story out of gore. Their story might comport in such a way that they get to have gore scenes in the same way that Disney's doing that with fight scenes, but. Beastars handling gore well? It's just like, yeah, I mean. Kinda of hard to say, right? It's like you don't want to be excessive. A hard line. So I came here to say gay stuff. So, gay nice. stuff. Oh, you've uh, exceeded, I guess. 
I would love to watch Rags play the Souls games. I know he has, isn't interested in them, but could Molar Metal try to sell him on giving them a shot? Uh, he no, has given them a shot, the, right? I think I played Dark uh, Dark Souls 3 for a little bit. And I was like, eh. And I just never cared to go back. I just, I just don't care. This particular vibe with those games, um, they are firmly in the category of I completely get it if people don't enjoy this. Bringy asking about self-awareness with character writing. It's pathetic that Marvel lately, with that Marvel lately, the idea of not knowing who the outright villains and heroes are based on morality and actions, it's like a pandemic now. I, yeah, and I feel like a lot of it just does stem from not recognizing what you've essentially done, you know? Like when you make storytelling choices, but then you don't think about the implications. Hmm. I feel like that's much more what it is than, you know, like to where people would be surprised by like, what do you mean, like, Natasha got destroyed because she buried a prison full of snow. It's like, you know, like, where you baffled. Oh, when that's Wonder not... Woman, right? Uh, oh, it's, uh, that that one is a clear. I don't know, because that one, how? You know how? <laughs> I would say no one on set who was like, um, this is very bad. This like, is rape. <laughs> Yeah, what a I, I, stupid uh, movie, man. Wonder Woman 1984. Such a dumb Ooh, movie. That's a bad one. It's a bad. They fucked up the one. They... Yeah, true. That's just true. that is a problem we have to deal with right now. Is they can't even tell what they're doing. How are you supposed to tell the good guys from the bad guys, as Falcon would say, only to then become part of that same? Yep. <laughs> from that same epidemic. They combine Nat meeting Clint and him sparing her, the Budapest mission, and Drakov's daughter, and cram them all into one story. Reminds me of Solo. A bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, look. This is how they the Kessel run. And then Cthulhu gets dropped into a black hole. That was necessary, okay? I, it's just, I don't believe that happened. Like, that part that in that movie, that. I think for some weird reason, that's... When that happened, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is happening? You say for some reason? Well, I mean, like, I guess, I guess I were, I meant to say, like, it, it came, it came across as the most surprising part of that movie, no, I, I, I think. I, yeah, I get you. I just, I don't know why you wouldn't immediately appeal the fact that it was a giant Cthulhu monster. That would probably be the reason, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers from the TVA. EFAP will eventually prove that 80% of Hollywood movies are more expensive versions of The Room. I'm ready for that arc. Let's do it. Um, thank you for the hours of entertainment. Or enjoyment, sorry. But, yeah. Thank you. Metal smells like sauerkraut. Racist, yes, but my kink. I don't know what to make of that. I'm just going to move on. Yep, move on. They'll never do the Hawkeye slash Black Widow origin story because it would require a strong, independent woman to be defeated and spared by a man. Is um, it sad that I think that might have entered into it? I think it's like... It, you, you can make that story anything you want. Um, the fact is, he doesn't know he's coming for her. So there's no reason to assume that, like... It doesn't mean that he's better than her, right? It just means that he outplayed her in that instance and then the story is about how they he spares her and they team up like, what there's loads of like why do we have to worry about whether or not it's because like they did more damage to natasha than that story ever could but they just don't understand it that way so yeah maybe um it was really unfortunate because uh i think if we got rid of hawkeye the show and black widow the movie and made them their own prequel movie everyone would have preferred it Ale Efab. Question. What was the size difference between the Red Room and Ultron's Flying Rock? Did the Red Room have caused an extinction event? Also high Rex. Oh, I think the Red Hello. Room was way smaller. The and also the Red Room wasn't moving as fast. Remember yeah, it the, like, the it like falls. Thrusters. Yeah, the, the thrusters are still, I think some, you know, it, it's not falling, not free fall, it seems. Um, meanwhile, well, pushed down. Ultron's is, yeah, not only free falling, but there's thrusters firing it down, so. And it's much bigger. 
it's fucking huge. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's still a problem, like that whole event in terms probably. of probably <laughs> something probably gets caused in some. Uh, Dracov's like the most mustache twirly MCU villain. I don't even know. He's he's just. It's just uh, terrible. I mean, yellow jacket. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's what I, that's what I think of when I think mustache twirly. When I think of Dracov, I'm just like, what a poorly written thing that is. Like, too many women. That's that's all I got. I'm like, all right. He is no snidely whiplash. Uh, Lord Longbong of Mewlington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to the prospect of a Kong fap movie fap of the Peter Jackson Kong? Yes, hello, Ragsies. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I think we've given some some thought to that. I think that's uh, that's on that's on a form of a way. Eventually, one day, we'll give it a give it a watch. See, be nice to get a refresh of it to know just how well it holds up. The only piece of information I ever remember about it, like before having seen it, was just uh, everyone was saying it takes them ages to get to Skull Island. It's like, hey, but what if that Aegis is really good stuff? Yeah, uh, and you really did like the Skull Island stuff. All those monsters and stuff. Even in the Skull Island one, I was like, ooh, this place is... I don't want to be here. I remember um, when they meet up with like the, the native people and stuff, they very much get close to doing some horror shit. Uh, yeah, they almost Skull get sacrificed Island. or whatever and interrupted by Kong's roar, I think. In... The in that Peter movie. Jackson one? Yeah. Oh yeah, like one of the guys gets fucking a spear thrown at him, and then they almost start to kill everybody, and then Kong comes and right I'm just saying, at the like right a moment. Bit, like bit, yeah. Uh, it's like, oh shit, it's not fun. I mean, yeah, they, they they definitely brush along horror stuff. I mean the fucking bug canyon and things oh, like that. Oh god. I'm not looking forward to ever seeing that again. I know I will. I've the, always felt horrible about Andy Circus in that scene. That deleted scene with the uh, like the Swamp monster? No, that just. Yep. Which is like something I kind of look forward to when I watch, you know, that kind of movie. I was like, as long as, as long as Skull Island is like full of terrifying monsters and everything, then I'm like, oh, all right. Well. Uh, easy. She's a Sith. Getting by cars makes her stronger. Getting hit by cars, I assume they mean. What if they kill you, though? Then um, they did not make you stronger. Rags touch my underside. No, don't from the knife. I want to die. No, don't from the knife. He sometimes just like, so they write out and then they hit send and they don't, they don't read it. Yeah, guys, send. I promise you, we are more than happy to answer your questions and respond to your thoughts, but you do not have to to hit enter if you're not ready to send that particular message. Take it nice and slow, you know? You don't have to rush. Um, also, pardon me, I need to use the loo, and I will be back in a moment. Never face palmed harder than when I asked my friends how nobody found the red room, and they responded, well, how did no one find Wakanda? <laughs> 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 They said phase four sucks. It's like maybe this person thinks that Wakanda being hidden makes more sense, which kind of well, not really because well, Wakanda's a whole country, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, uh... Red Room moves and it's really high up and it's a it's a facility rather than a country. So yeah, I just think it's stupid that both of them were found. In fact, we know that Wakanda was found. It's just only by a select few people, and it's still just a myth. Like, hmm, alright. Mola's red rad gas. Yeah, I'd be happy to create a, a fun gas. Wonder if poor blood effect is for China censorship. Is that something China prefer to be censored? Uh, I sure that's what America kind of dials down on as well, right? Like you, I if thought. you have too much blood, then you uh, then you end up R-rated.
I'm going to see Black Widow tomorrow with my family, and I have no idea why the hell I agreed to do that. I still need to rewatch this EFAP after that. Have fun! Yeah. You must really love your family. Or really hate them. I don't know. I guess, you know. Rags, I just inherited a Smith & Wesson 35... 357 Magnum from my grandpa. I've shot some handguns before, but nothing like this. Any advice? Uh, practice proper gun safety. Take care of it. Keep it clean. Um, yeah, just basic stuff like that. Yeah, I guess there was something like, is there any specific advice for that gun? But have you used that oh, gun? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not. No, I, I don't. Uh, I only have uh, one revolver. Uh, really don't have much advice to give apart from just the basic stuff be safe keep it clean so that it because they'll those things will keep their value a lot of the times guns can keep their value um so take care of it be responsible and enjoy it you know have a have a good time yeah uh man disney disney really doesn't like the concept of free will well, this movie's about getting it back for the Black Widows. Very emotional experience. Very potent. Imagine if Black Widows were patriots and did all that crap willingly in the service of the country. So much more potential than stupid mind control. What do you mean, like, they were all... How, do you, how does that... What do you mean? A lot of what they did was, like, killing political targets and stuff. I guess if they, there was some sort of ideology that they were trying to propagate that they believed in rather than... Like in Russia, just control, in like general? They, well, you know, just... Or maybe it would be that they're simply... Like, a more interesting concept might be... Well, they seem to express a perspective, you know, in favor of these things, but how much of that should we just attribute to their conditioning essentially by living this life? Yeah, presumably you know, they would have been conditioned no matter what... Um, but I guess this well, person advocating that... As opposed to strict mind control, you know? That it's like, they've essentially been manipulated more so than yeah. they have no agency at all. Um, as for that being more interesting, I, I think I agree. Because uh, this was all new, right? Like, that they're mind controlled. We thought they were conditioned in the more traditional yeah. sense. Not that they had, like, a thing in their brain that made it impossible for them to... Yeah. You know? That's... That's sorted Make out choices. by red gas. Doing, like, I don't know why. Yeah, that's that's that. Um, it would even fit the current Russian political narrative. We are alone in a besieged fortress. Enemies, Americans are everywhere. So sad. You you could definitely do that. I just um, you you know for a fact that they wanted to make it so that all the Black Widows were innocent, like yeah, of course. strictly innocent. Which is interesting, right? Because they're all different people. We have no idea what they think and feel. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if they'll... I don't even know what their plan is with that. They've got a lot of Black Widows there that... Uh, uh, probably Black Widow too, right? With Yelena. Yeah, you just wonder what kind of plotline will involve them. Maybe they'll uh, come I... in at the end and help her with I something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they drop the Red Room with no idea if it's directly above a city. They have to be in North America because Ross is there immediately, too. So, I think that's a mistake. I think they are still in Russia because in Russia. it's just yeah. that Ross just appears fucking really fast. I guess we have to assume he was sitting on a jet waiting for the, for the go-ahead, you know? I, I don't know. It's, it's silly, I know. Ross lives on a jet, ready to appear in whatever scene he's needed. Not anymore. Your new IDs still have her face. A very wanted criminal. Apparently no one will recognize her face. She has a different name. That this this is a huge problem in the movie. It's he's Black Widow. He's famous as fuck. You said in your video she's more famous in her world than Scarlett Johansson is in ours. And everyone knows Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. If you fucking walked into like your convenience store, you'd be like, holy shit, and that she's like, No no no, I'm I'm Jane. <laughs> you're like, like, no, oh. you're not. <laughs> And then, also, you know she's wanted. You'd be like, oh, hi, Jane. What would you like to buy? As you're slowly <laughs> nudging your hand over to the silent alarm. Hopefully not the one from The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> silent alarm activate. What? What is That's the point? That's a great gag. 
<laughs> Silent alarm, actually. <laughs> Ross. Ross borrowed that surface-to-air missile from Victor Zaz. That woman is here to bring some logic to the MC. Oh, I remember <laughs> when they called an RPG a surface-to-air <laughs> missile? <laughs> <laughs> it's an RPG. He had it under his face. He just pulls it out from his bar. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> that was one of the funniest scenes of that show. <laughs> Oh, that's another thing we'll have to do when we finish the Batwoman coverage. It's like a montage of the best moments. Yeah. It's like in memoriam, this fucking worthless, stupid <laughs> circus of a show. But why not? Uh, you people are idiots. Obviously they have to make these poor fighting choices or else the TVA will melt them. True. That barrel was stronger than Worf. What barrel? I don't remember. Um, hmm. Barrel? Was there a barrel somewhere? I guess there was. I can't remember. I don't know what... I was gonna I say, why are they trying to make us remember this film? How cruel. Yeah, don't they know that we were gonna read these yeah. three years <laughs> after they sent it? Uh, aluminium can is more durable than Neva. She dead. Can. Does someone get hit by a can of something or a barrel? Hmm. And they said the Neva. Who's Neva? I don't remember no Neva. Uh, Mola's PC is dying. The TLJ lovers have attacked. It is as the spiders predicted. Long have they foreseen this doom. And yet, I'm on the same PC a year later. Because uh, it's still it's still chugging along. It was I just took the side panel off and got a fan on it now, which keeps it from exploding. But I still don't imagine it's got significant amount of time left. But let's hope it does. It makes no sense she is this strong. Taskmaster in the comics did have a super soldier serum which explained his strength, but it's this Taskmaster should not unless the chip enhances his strength, which I don't think it does. Um, is there anything in the suit that we're supposed to assume does anything? I don't know. Um, because yeah, Olga is a very slender lady. Is a tiny lady. Oh boy, oh boy. I have been waiting for this breakdown for two weeks now. Have 20 bucks for suffering through this festering pile of Marvel sludge that does nothing but set up the Hawkeye TV show. Um, I guess it leads like into it. But it... TV show, right? Well, I think that... I would even go as far as saying Black Widow as a film was like a... It's setting up Yelena. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's the setup. Much more so than anything to do with Hawkeye. So she well, obviously turns up in Hawkeye. Maybe in the show. Yeah, but I mean, the show is probably a lot more about Clint and Kate Bishop more so than Yelena, right? Oh yeah, uh, well actually I don't know. I have no idea how long she's in it for or whatever she even does in it. I know they cry together in it, that's all I got. Uh, yeah. You'd think that a cinematic universe whose inciting incident is a person being mortally wounded by an explosion, that uh, they'd be very stringent about realistic injury from explosions, wouldn't you? Nope. Uh, that's the funny thing about the Iron Man one, is like, some people would bring it up as like, See? We've done this before where explosions don't kill people. It's like, man. Mm. Yeah, it didn't kill him. You're right about that. Uh, Taskmaster had character, and what's upsetting is that it takes place after Civil War, and Taskmaster in the comics taught Crossbones, and that could have been a connected to Civil War and have future villains be taught by him. I think it's, it's such it, a waste of Taskmaster. It was perfect it really to have is. Taskmaster. There's a character in, um, I think I've referenced it before, the show Alias. I mean, uh, I mean you guys have maybe have heard of it. I'm aware of it, yeah. The, the premise of that show is there's a secret organization under the CIA, I think, that do, like, really covert ops that are at times very, very controversial and um, a lot of it starts to get focused around this. They're finding these machines from a creator named Rambaldi and uh, there's a big mystery behind it. If you get every one of his machines, you may unlock fucking infinite life or something like that. It's, it gets a little crazy, but each uh, season and then minor arcs within the season have different like major villains. And when we first meet one of the subordinates of one of these first villains, he's, he's called Sark. I think it's Julius Sark. And he's played by an actor who is quite fun and charismatic. Um, 
And I think the first time they beat him, he just narrowly gets away. And then he turns up because he's a, basically a mercenary as working for the next villain. And he's just like an opportunist looking for money and stuff. And so now you've got a person who we know how threatening he is. We have a back and forth chemistry with the characters already. And we actually like the actor playing him. So there's a lot of things you can benefit from by doing that. And I think Taskmaster should have been that in the MCU. It would have been really cool. A, a mercenary who's really fucking clever. And he doesn't actually give a shit about any of the goals the person he's working for. He just wants to, you know, fight where needed to be and make things happen to get the money. It's like his only thing. Um, yeah, some ulterior motive that will not be learned until, yeah, down the road. And Yeah, I like that idea of he's not, like, evil. But, you know, he's an opportunist. Yeah, I like that. You know, works for the good guys, works for the bad guys. Maybe he's on our side today. Maybe he's not tomorrow. But he's oh, got some leverage to where we might not be able to just capture him. Classic you know, opportunity that... there as well to have stories where you team up with him because of circumstances working that way. There's no reason why, like, a Taskmaster type character wouldn't want to stop Thanos, you know? Absolutely. I, I yeah, I don't want to. Like, imagine they, get... they contact him because he's got, I don't know, some ability or opportunity that could be really helpful for a particular element of their story and he agrees because of that is just like there's so much narrative potential and then um yeah they're almost disappointed then after that sort of event that he's back working for whatever villain of the week it is this time it's this long-running character and then you know his death you just want to tie it into what the main story has been all about regarding him but it wouldn't need to happen for a long time and just try and make sure you justify that he has escapes because that's his whole thing. He just doesn't care to actually fulfill whatever principle he's fighting for necessarily because he's more so about surviving ultimately. And that could have been Taskmaster. Um, the fucking insanity that the writer of Black Widow said. How do we involve a black, uh, sorry, a, a character like Taskmaster in this story about like the black widows and the russian shit like how, how can we how can we bring him in it just doesn't really make sense we had to make it so that it was drakov's daughter it's just like the fuck how do we bring in a mercenary I have a, yeah exactly <laughs> that's right that's it it's, like, oh my God. it's one of the easiest characters to bring in just give him a job that's it the spider that walked into your fan was trying to warn you he traded his life to warn you and we took his message for granted yeah. Forever may he rest. How did they choose Taskmaster? Randomly pulled the name out of a bag with the label male character to be turned into a woman? I don't. I don't. I'm at simple as Taskmaster. He's in the comics, um, and then somewhere in the process, they decided to make that change. Bizarre that yeah. they wouldn't really keep that one for later use, considering the power set that. Uh, Taskmaster yeah. Well, has. I mean. Nobody was happy with that, um, or at least it seems like most people aren't happy with Taskmaster. Complete waste. I don't see how you would be in any well, regard. Yeah, especially you like the character, because he's nothing like- she- sorry, she's nothing like the character. The character, the powers, and the aesthetic, it's all just like, what? Ugh. Yeah. It's like the worst of everything. Yeah, a bit. All too familiar at this point. Mm -hmm. Deadpool in the comics beat Taskmaster by copying TV, Dancing with the Stars, constantly making it up as he goes. This could be adapted for Black Widow. Hell yeah! We went over this when we first covered it. Just, the heroes have to eventually just start adopting unpredictable patterns. That would be so fucking cool. Exactly. Like, goddamn. It's, it's almost, like, infuriating. It's like, how did you not notice this payoff? And then if you did and just didn't want to have it, why? Yeah. Why must you do this? Why, 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 why? My sister thinks Cruella is good. Help! Oh. So sorry. Um, how was Taskmaster mimicking Black Panther's claws? Black Panther is not known to the world at this point. Even from its footage in the airport, video, that would have yeah. just happened. So she made the claws when? I, that's what I... It's not a hole. It's, it's a... Um, Contrivance, I guess, that that happened that quickly. So is Taskmaster's ability... Yeah, and if you're... I wonder how many things you could do as Taskmaster before your your potency with each of those things really gets watered down. You know? Like, if you have five things you do, it's like, maybe you're really good at them, but if you start to get, like, ten things, fifteen things, you're like, well, how, how good are you really at all of those things? 
At that point, it would depend on how Taskmaster works. If it was like a machine that was programmed, it's supposed to be really good at all of them. But if it's a person who's going by memory, yeah, I don't know. Um, they can totally have a male Taskmaster, but he'll be a poor copy of the female Taskmaster. Uh, though, how can they make him worse? Wait for the quip saying the other one was better. I don't think they'll have a male Taskmaster at this point. I, don't, I, don't, I just I can't imagine them doing that. It'll be it'll be almost like an admitting they kind of fucked up. They don't tend to do that. Sounds like your CPU fan is broken. Uh, certainly one of them is. Oh no! One of the two. Um. Well, one of them can mean a lot of them, right? No, generally your CPU cooler only has, I mean, by default, generally the, the ones that come with a CPU will only have one fan. There can be many fans in your PC, but generally only one or two of them will be CPU fans for the CPU cooler. Like, I have two CPU fans that are attached on either side of the, um, the, the grill of the CPU cooler. Um, well, uh, in that case, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's, I know it used to... At one point it was fine, and then it made chuggy sounds, and now it doesn't make any sounds at all, because I'm pretty sure it's not spinning anymore. Um, but obviously, I've, the main thing I've done is just keep an eye on temperatures the whole time, and it got real bad, and then the side panel came off, a fan is put on it, one of them custom fans that you have on the... buy from the interwebs. <gasps> and uh, the CPU... Well... Amps on the PC in, in general are still pretty good now, so I was like, I guess we'll keep it that way for a little bit. Yeah, I kind of have a setup to where my, my computer's over to the left, and it's up on a desk, and I have a fan that is constantly blowing on me, and the fan sort of intersects with the PC, you know, because it's a pretty good fan, I don't need it all blowing on me, so I kind of have part of the fan just blowing kind of into the PC, and it's just kind of, air is just sort of circulating around, and yeah, it, it mm. works pretty well. The fan is multi-purpose. It's one, and it's one of those. It's a big but cheap fan from Amazon, and it's just been running like twenty-four-seven for months and months now. And it's pretty darn quiet, and it's got a lot of good blowing power. I'm very happy with it. Um, love the show. Here's some scratch for the task manager. Nice. Uh, Vito being Tism in chat. To be fair, that's really ever not tis me. Some way. The familiarity. Uh, Assmaster can't predict Deadpool because he's too random. Well, um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just. There's no real. I don't think they've made clear what Deadpool's fighting style is in his movies yet, and I haven't read Deadpool comics, so. I guess of, it would be that he's just an unpredictable person. You know, that's fine with me. Like, like uh, I think that's even cool. This is the thing, like, yeah. a Captain America, I think, would be a really cool one for Taskmaster to show off... Taskmaster to show, show off his, like, abilities. Absolutely. A fight where Cap, like, you know, bursts in, is, is doing really well, and starts to be 50-50 until Cap can't land a single hit. Mm -hmm. It'll be a really fun scene to have, but never... Deadpool in the comics beat Taskmaster. Oh yeah, it's the, it's the same thing as um, the other one said. Fair enough. The computer probably are definitely on his mind. Also, Henlo Ragu. Henlo! Alright. Rags doesn't talk about Mordhau for one stream challenge. Ultra difficulty. He doesn't talk about Mordhau in ages. I haven't. Though it just so happened someone showed me a funny Mordhau video before we did this recording, and now I kind of have the itch to start playing again. Mm. That is a funny game. JK, I love it when you Dumbos talk about stuff you really like. Play DDLC. We don't like DDLC. <laughs> we don't dislike it either. Brilliant. So it's up in the air. It's up in the air. Who knows? The air it is up. The air it is up. Praise the air. My sister... Oh, wait, I read that one. Uh, movie would have been better if Greg Davis was under the mask and the reveal was that the film was an April Fool's joke that got delayed by the pandemic. I think it Kevin is. Kevin Feige under the mask. Hi, I'm Kevin Feige, CEO of Marvel. 
I'm here to tell you this movie is bad. I thought it was good. I'm here to tell you that this movie was an, a literal joke. It was a test. If you thought it was good, you're wrong. We purposefully decided to try and ruin all these characters and have a plot that didn't make sense. If you didn't notice, shame on you. You failed the test. Please leave the theater. Re refunds will not be issued. Um, art has no defined purpose. Discuss. Purpose? Um, I guess it's to purpose express, purpose yeah, to express right. yourself, yeah. It, 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 the purpose well, is guess, expression. I, I, well, is it is that the purpose, or is that just an aspect of it necessarily? Yeah, I guess. Like someone could come along and say, I have absolutely no passion or desire to express myself. I merely must in order to produce the art. And the reason why I'm producing the art is because I want accolades and fame. Right. Money. So I don't know. But, well, I think I don't think that would I mean that would still be them expressing themselves in that art that they make. Yeah, but like express I, I thought the purpose, right? The purpose they yeah, they express Oh, I see what you mean, I see what you mean. Purpose, uh right? yeah, I suppose so. Uh yeah, the I don't purpose know what the is something would be Yeah. Because things can be made with an intent, but I think yeah, it's of... different from what it actually is. When yeah. we discussed uh, what makes art art, uh, I think part of your definition involved um, an intention, right? You, you, I think you said like that if it didn't have intention, then it would just be like if I poop, and then I look down, and I'm like, oh my god, it's it's the Mona Lisa. Uh, you wouldn't consider that art because it's. Yeah, I don't think I don't think in that case because it's incidental, and even though it was made by a person, so to speak, it wasn't any express like act of expression. Um, so yeah, I don't think that would qualify as art. It could be perceived as beautiful, I guess, but it wouldn't be. Um, Do you think the difference yeah, there though is that if I said as I was pooping, man, I really hope I can make a pretty good picture with this one, and then I go, oh shit, it did, sweet. The desire. I think that might be just the desire to express yourself, and it incidentally happens. You still wouldn't call that out. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and then I can't believe we're still on this one, but I mean, it's just <laughs> so I'm I'm sl slightly moving my ass in a particular way to try and do my best to 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 create the image of the Mona Lisa. Is it out then? <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> I think I can't surely at that point maybe. it is. I think so, yeah. I'd say, yeah, I, I think so. I think that would technically be art. That would be interesting, though, in terms of, like, if there's an art gallery and you see a painting you really enjoy, and then uh, above it it says, like, created unintentionally, so please don't regard as art, sort of thing. But, I, you know, I imagine you wouldn't give a shit at that point. You'd just be like, well, yeah, but I like the painting. Hey Moller, I know Mando is usually praised online, but I was wondering if you're, you've seen a video on YouTube called Why Mando Season 2 is Kinda Crap. If not, I'd recommend giving it a watch. Also, hi Rex. It's not. Uh, hello. Hey, it's not kinda crap, though. Was, it's awful. <laughs> I, so I was about to say, I've seen a video called Why Mando Season 2 is fucking terrible. It's in the form of like, seven, eight videos. It's on this channel called, uh, Moogla, EFAP. Mm, Great. I think I've heard of it, <laughs> yeah. They go into depth on all the episodes. They hated it. Well, I guess I, I don't know if I'd say I hate Mando. It's bad. I don't hate it. I, I'm more upset at the meta aspect of it's just a terrible show that people seem to really like. And it is full of the things that I do not want to have happen, particularly with Luke Skywalker. Hmm. Um, anything can be objectively measured, including music, as long as you've set the metrics you're using to measure against and the standard you'll measure. Oh, sorry. Yeah, measure and then measure again. Um, what you highlight in there is actually the the cringe I find with people who overcorrect about the word objective, where they're like, you know, it should never be used in the context. Like, whoa, hang on. Like, everyone uses it to mean that um, they made a statement that doesn't regard their own personal feelings or, or judgment, rather. Like, that's a, that's a thing. We don't need to believe that the standard comes intrinsically with the. Uh, category of thing like you, you can you can ignore that part but if you really want to say like you can't even say a statement that's objective and then you do the thing where you're like unless of course you say fucking ben affleck did star as batman you, like you say that dismissively when it's just like so you've just opened up a huge uh yeah problem with your statements earlier 
Yeah, it's like, yeah, well, let's start there. That's a good point. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. Let's let's start there and carry on. Taskmaster is Robocop. <gasps> oh my god, Murph, what happened to you? I was say Murph reminds me of Instella. Oh no. <laughs> That's bad. You watched it recently. You gave it a black hole out of ten. Oh. I heard you. Black hole out of ten. That's pretty. That's pretty dense of you. It is. It is a dense score, and no quality can escape. <laughs> uh, the gun scene just made me think of the gun fight at the end of Resident Evil Vendetta. I haven't seen that one. If that's like an animated one. I think it's an animated one. Uh, the one oh, that gets that the... memed on. For, oh, yeah. the meme fight. Yeah. Okay, I've seen that. Uh, that's great. Man, imagine seeing yeah, that, like, candidly, yeah. instead of it being set up as a stupid scene. Like, just seeing that because you just wanted to watch that Resident Evil movie. Oh. I wonder if... Who knows? Maybe one day we'll watch the Resident Evil animated ones and see if they're just as bonkers and weird as the... I think they have a better the, reputation, but I imagine I they are so, pretty bonkers. But... Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I hope mm -hmm. so. I don't want to pull any punches on the crazy train. Um, I'm a zoology student, and you all made some really big mistakes and assumptions on the last EFAP. I made a post on Reddit about the bear-tiger debate. Wow, I, okay. I, I mean, it was we all probably speculation for the most part. I think that was probably when we read, because I remember we did, d during that discussion, we did read something that someone had wrote, uh, wrote so I, I think we did end up reading And I'm reading pretty that. sure they sided with the, uh, the, the bear, sorry. And that was... I think so. that was the conclusion on that one. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right, I think we did read it out. And... Yeah. This is the thing, it's just, um, a lot of it's really, you can't even give a definitive answer. Like, as long as we all agree that's fucking the truth, that's great as a starting point. You can just talk about likelihoods. Huh. Um, yeah. No need to be a party pooper and be like, nobody can be right when they say the bear loses. It's like, come on. Uh, said by Vito in chat. I can objectively define things that Hitler did. I can subjectively claim whether they are good or bad. I have some questions. God, all right. That's well. actually, you can go further. You can objectively qualify whether an action is good or bad. Once you have a system to work with and criteria and you define things, yeah, you can absolutely. Actually, like, what the last Super Chat went over, or one of the last ones. Yeah, absolutely. Like, is morality subjective? Sure. But once you have a moral framework to work in, you can assess actions and things objectively. We, how many times have we been you over this? have a if, system to work with. If someone says, you can't say Black Widow is bad because it made, let's just say for the sake of argument, a billion dollars. And it's like, so your definition of good then is reaching a particular amount of money made. And then they'd be like, well no, just because something made a load of money doesn't mean it's good. And then you'd be like, can you please tell me what it means to be good because I don't know what, like, what are you, what are you saying? And if they eventually said like, well there isn't any way, it's like, well you should have opened with that instead, because a lot of people just have a specific definition of where they're using good, and it can change on context, I'm totally fine with that. But once we figure it out, i.e. how consistent I... the, the internal, how internally consistent it is, um, then, then yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be easy. But if you were like, well, no, because it still makes money, well, no, because people still really like it, well, no, because it uh, represents something culturally, I'd just be like, oh, well, I don't care about any of those standards. And like, I wouldn't just throw it out for no reason at all. If they wanted to know why, I'd just be like, because a lot of the time you'll get scenarios where like something made loads of money, but good god, it's fucking terrible. Transformers is obviously the one everyone goes with. Like, okay, culturally impactful, and yet terrible. I mean, Black Panther, I guess? Like, okay, um, it's considered great, but it's terrible. Bioshock Infinite. So it's like, yeah, so what's the key, what's the key part of all this then? It's like, well, buy me a system better than internal consistency. Because Black Panther, Transformers, and Bioshock Infinite all fail miserably on those ones. Hmm. Seems to answer the question. Uh, Interesting. Ah. Uh, collar bullets Bullet. probably a 9x39mm used by Spetsnaz. I remember the collar bullets. So oh, funny. Uh, I'd have to double check what they look like. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. 
Maybe, but I don't think so. I wouldn't. It's just silly to have just like, what, like three random bullets just on your collar and little loops? It's like, why don't you just have like a pouch that has entire magazines in it? It looks cool. Like a soldier. Very cool. That is true. I didn't consider. That was my mistake. I didn't consider how very cool it looked. Because when I saw it and I was confused and annoyed, what I really. That was just me trying to rationalize that I thought it looked so cool. It must not have been true. Oh, that was. There was something that happened in Stellar. I don't remember what it was anymore, but uh, I was pointing out how it was dumb and Duma said yes, but to be fair, there is an element of rule of cool here. And I was like, no. 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 Not doing that. <laughs> not dealing with that shit. Yeah. Rule of Cool. Well, the thing is, like, when Rule of Cool happens in, like, a, a tabletop role-playing game, where if you're, you're a player and you say, hey, DM, listen, I'm going to pitch you this thing, and it's going to be really cool. Would you let me do it? And the DM says, you know what? Rule of Cool, I'm going to let you do it. It's done with this understanding that it's not consistent or it doesn't quite follow the rules, but it's so creative and cool that you just allow it anyway for the sake of having fun. Like, it's built into the aspect of Rule of Cool is that the only reason that it's being approved of is because it's cool and for not an actual reason. Reminding me of how we try to explain what nitpick means based on how everyone uses it, but no one seems to realize what it means. Like, people use nitpick to mean you're talking about something that isn't a problem. When what they really mean is it is a problem, it's just really small in, in effect. Yeah, you ask 10 people, you might get 10 different answers, but we've been yeah. consistent on our, our nitpick definition. A tiny thing does not necessarily mean tiny consequences. Or if it does, that's fine. Just don't then be like, it's not a problem at all. It's like, well, no, it is. That's why we're highlighting it. It's just that it's not significant. Oh, and, and then you're right that some people will call literally fucking everything a nitpick. It makes you wonder what they think is an actual problem. Uh. Yeah, can actual problems exist at that point? You wonder that with some people. Well, I mean, you know, the audio and visuals are working. So, no. <laughs> You're like, right. Shut up, Rags. Fully trained killing machine assassins don't know how to use handguns. Mm. Yeah, that was really fucking annoying. Uh, the Black Widows. She had a pistol and she didn't use it in that stupid scene. It's fine. Uh, you might need to buy a new cooler and change paste. Well, uh, you know, a year on and the thing is, is trucking along. And it's been pretty well behaved, PC now, so I'm still looking to get a new one. Um, but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, easy answer is the writer saw Jason Bourne fight with a rolled magazine. I don't even remember that. I've not seen the Bourne films in quite some time. Likewise. Which is the best one? What do people usually think? I don't know. As far as the Bourne movies, I don't think I've seen any. Hmm. Well. Mm. Historically, Taskmaster trained Crossbones and John Walker, US agent from Falcon Soldier. That's part of the reason Walker is such a crazy good soldier. That would be really fucking cool to have him be relevant to these characters. Mm -hmm. And put him throughout the MCU. He can be a little consistent element. Yeah. Um, so that when he finally is prominent in the show, you're like, hey, I know you, sort yeah. of. I have a feeling I'll start to learn know you a lot more. I hope they don't ruin you or do you dirty, more like. This one just says Robert Downey Jr. is 50. Huh, good for him. Um, They could be, but we use... Just, so this just says, they could be, but we phones, for fuck's sake. What's huh. this? They could be, but we phones, for fuck's sake. I'm telling you guys. I wish I knew what thought you were trying to convey. Oh, they follow up with saying, burner phones, damn it. And I'm sitting here like, uh... okay, but now your sentence says, they could be, but we burner phones. It's they so could don't be. Know it at all. Yeah, but... and they had, they had two... Super chats that give you both of those would have given you a sentence that so can be as long as double the first one. So I just I don't know yeah. what you, I don't know what you're saying is, is what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why is your national plant an onion, Mola? Onion is oh, in is it? more stuff than you realize. All right, onion's great. 
Onions, the taste from onion is... is oh, I hate onions. You don't even know how much you like onions. It's in loads of shit. Oh, I hate onions. I don't, know if I don't like the texture of onion, but I like the taste. I... Yeah, I'm just... Ugh. You say that, but it, yeah, there's onion in lots of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost oh. certain Rags likes a lot of things that he doesn't realize onion is in. I'm sure that, like, there, like, I know onion powder is a thing that's in a lot of stuff. And some things can be, I like some things that probably have onion powder in it. But as far as, I don't, I really don't like that. Maybe I just like them despite it. But I've never, like, onion stuff is just, I just really don't like it. Really don't like it. Okay. Okay. Why isn't she being monitored by shield now sword while also wear cap, lol, or Sam, lol? And what we the movie says, I don't buy it. Well, I guess we don't need to see what Cap and Falcon are up to. She seems to be just chilling on her own at that point, which is just yeah. after Civil War, right? So, mm -hmm. actually, it's during Civil War. Sorry, it's not after Civil War. Kind of <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's so fucking insane that that takes place in Civil War. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? She went off and had her own little mini adventure <laughs> before the. But, but it's. Well, mini. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, yeah, I guess a huge. It, I, you know, but I guess was it before the airport or after? It's after the airport. Oh, yeah, it's after the airport. the airport. So <laughs> between the airport and then we see her again. Yeah, the idea is she talks to Tony, who she says like they're coming for you, and then she, like, goes oh. burns her accounts and just becomes a secret person. Does all the shit in Black Widow, and then right at the end she gets the the jet and goes and finds Steve. To help him break them out of the the raft. That's the idea. Okay. Which is insane. Uh, remember how the Winter Soldier was a Russian asset? Why not call Bucky? He's just helping farm rhinos. Um, because that the Winter Soldier was being controlled by the Soviets and Hydra. Um. I, I, was Hydra I, in the Soviet Union? I don't, this is the thing, I remember trying to look into this to figure out exactly what the continuity is, and I'm not even sure what it is anymore, because he's very Russian, but at the same time, Winter Soldier is all about how Hydra have complete control over him. The Hydra and Soviet Union are different things. I think they must have yeah. taken control of, like, the research and the code words and stuff, because, yeah, the, the Soviet Union and Hydra were probably not at all allies. I don't know exactly what... I remember checking the wiki and not finding the answer. Um, so I, I'm not sure what happened where and when to explain all that. Um, hey, I was in the building during 9-11, but I was trained in managing pain. I forgot how to fly, though. Oh. I think it's uh, referencing the fact that she jumped off the thing. I guess. Okay. Uh, remember when assassins were stealthy? Winter Soldier was a ghost, lol. D d I wish we could reference uh, Winter Soldier positively in that regard, but the man, the man like, uh, does not care about being found in that movie. Not in that movie, he certainly doesn't, yeah. Think of the time when he very well assassinates Nick Fury with a sniper. He still gets found by Steve. Yeah. And you can't be like, well, Steve's a Winter Soldier. Steve's a... Super Soldier. He'd be like, yes, yeah, so it was Winter Soldier, so... Mm -hmm. If he'd... Remember how long Steve spends in the apartment before even going out of it after Nick is shot, like... He just stands around. He has yep, to. has to. It's, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's a bad movie. But how else do we get the cool scene where he grabs a shield and then he doesn't steal it? And then doesn't keep it. Holy shit, I'd be taking that. Why the hell didn't he take it? Why didn't he take it? <laughs> One of the best assets one of your biggest enemies has, but all right, fine. All right. And now it's yours. Um, Can you imagine just about him having to fight without the shield? He has to get it back from, like, the next time he encounters Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier has it, and he has to fight for it again. Yeah, cool. That would but then we wouldn't have had the scene where he charges the dude with the minigun. Yep. <laughs> She with a shield. <laughs> oh. The Russian accent in Black Widow is just terrible caricature. I'm Russian. I know a lot of Russians who can speak English more or less good, but no one has such a thick, stupid accent as the Russians in Black Widow. 
That's just you the stereotype. Lying. They always do it that way. Yeah, every single one does. That's a Russian lie. They tell that to all of the outsiders so that we don't think they're as silly as they are. Or Russian. They all sound. Or Russian. Um. Uh, and yes, Russians never speak English among themselves. Also. Well, I, 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 they said a bunch Rab of Russian stuff. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Hmm. I think they're saying hi, Rags. Oh! But it be it. Uh, uh, someone said earlier in the stream that Southpaw said Civil War is bad on Ecom. That's not true. We didn't mention Civil War yesterday. Hi, Rags and Madvocate. Hi. Um... I'm pretty sure he thinks it's bad, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's totally fine. Beto in EFAP 150, please. I'm afraid we've already had 150. It's in the past. I cannot change Coming the guests on. of it now. I'm so sorry. Unless. <gasps> da -da -bam -ba -da. Da -da -da. James Bond, famous for his time travel. Da -da -ba. Technically, it is famous for time travel because that man couldn't have existed in every one of those movies of that age. I'm sorry. It just doesn't make sense. I think it's uh, that 007 is a designation, right? And there's always a different 007 person. You actually think I that? I think that was James. Maybe, that, maybe that's a code name, like you are James Bond. Wait, are you both under the impression that the continuity isn't that he's the same guy throughout all those movies? Oh, no, no, no. I thought he, I, I knew that he was, but that there would be, that like if he died in universe, someone else could just be 007. I think yeah, in like universe it's a designation, but in regards yeah. to he's been alive for fucking ages. Um, uh, yeah. That's a sliding time scale thing, right? That's, that's, that's like that's Simpsons, comics, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. We just got done talking about super soldiers. MI6 has their own super soldier serum, but it doesn't make you super strong. It just makes you change your body slowly over time, and you don't get too old. And in between movies, you just sort of undergo... You have a cocoon at the bottom of Big Ben, and you, you, you hear the chimes, bing, boom, bing, boom, and then the queen comes by, with her wand and goes Aww. and then a new James Bond emerges from the cocoon this is a bit of a tangent but I've just seen this on Twitter it's been three years today since the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer the first one got released yeah and boy <laughs> what a disaster <laughs> that was well yeah so um, I, I, the reason why I see this is because someone said on Twitter that uh, they saw the original licensed merchandise. A lot of it was finished, and a lot of it had to be basically tossed out because yeah. you know, they had to redesign the character. It wasn't a PR stunt in all likelihood because that would have cost a lot of money. That was a I, very expensive mistake, you know. Like it's uh, yeah, made... I highly I I never I don't think I ever thought it was a PR stunt because never... what an insane gamble that would have been. Well, I, I think um. I, I saw something else on Twitter where someone mentioned that, like, part of the reason why the film got greenlit in the first place was because they saw, like, Michael Bay's Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, the more botched designs, and that was what convinced them that they could do Sonic. They, th like, that was always the idea originally was to <laughs> make Sonic look less like Sonic and more like, I guess, a thing that might exist. It's so awful, these images. What the fuck were they thinking? Look, it was made with love. Why can't you just appreciate yeah. that? Uh, hey, Mola. Mind if we get more straw polls in the future? I love the audience engagement. And did you ask the Halloween versus Christmas question and bathwater question? We don't really do the... Well, both we of them to. much anymore. We need to come up... We need a new poll question, because we, have, we haven't done one in a while. It's not a, kind of one that's... Kind of, yeah. We need to we need to come up with one. That needs to be on our to do list. Hmm. As several in chat have pointed out, since she can survive all of this, how can she die falling off that cliff in Endgame? Aha! Uh -huh. No one knows. Nobody knows. Not to mention road sign poles are designed to bend on impact, not stay rigid, and knock off the door. I remember that part of the film. Super weird, the uh, the way that the door came off. 
No, because the door flew in the other direction. Yeah, yeah. the flu the, the door simultaneously did like three different things that are bizarre and weird to have this equally bizarre and weird thing. It, like that was your oh my god. That was so stupid and it's funny. Rule of cool. It's the camera trick. They're trying to trick you into thinking. Because if the camera didn't do that, it would be a lot clearer what happened. Like if you had a wide frame. And then it comes off the door and bounces the other way, like the door coming off. And shoots like, the opposite direction. He's like, that's like, not... That's like, not maybe just a tiny little bit, but just a tiny little bit, if it happens at all. Which it but won't. But it flies it off like a missile. Yeah. I'm like, what do you do? What? This is not how physics works, but Black Widow as a film uh, laughs in the face of reality. All logic, yes. Oh, yes. All logic and reason. Um, didn't Hawkeye take part in the assassination? If so, what does that say about his character? Um, it's unclear in the way that they portray it that, um, he's aware of the fact that using a little girl as bait. I'm not sure if he knows. I'm guessing he knows, because the way it's said is, he's like, is, you know, is, are we a go on the explosion, uh, explosive? And then she says yes. Like, she's the one that's noting the entry of the girl, not him. I, I, I don't know with what they've told us if that's happening or not. I, I really don't. Um, as Sev, oh, yeah. Uh, hello there, massives. Shut up and take my money. You guys do it all right the way that you do it. Anyways, guys, thankful for movies like Black Panther and TLJ for forging this community. Muller, I could listen to you read the phone book. Oh, that'd be pretty boring, I was gonna say. But, um, thanks, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. Black Panther and TLJ, great movies. All EFAP does is attack women and kill art. EFAP, discussing in-depth tic-tac-toe tactics on a wall in a random establishing shot. Massive moment. Look, it wasn't me that decided Hawkeye and Black Widow didn't know how to play tic-tac-toe. It's bizarre. It's just fucking weird, okay? It's just really... It's weird. Because you wonder how did that happen? Someone said, all right, we, we need to make it look like they've been here. Well, maybe they have tic-tac-toe on a wall. I was like, what would they do on the wall when they use paper? Da -da 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 -da. They do it on a wall. Uh, so make a tic-tac-toe where they played on the wall. Oh, okay. And like, they don't know how tic-tac-toe works, which I don't... How is it possible for you to not know that? It's pretty uh, embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Guys, if they didn't play noughts and crosses like idiots, they would have been melted. It's true. That is true. Didn't Hawkeye... Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, I mean, Black Widow assassinated hundreds of people before S.H.I.E.L.D. That couldn't have been the first kid or innocent person she's killed. It's not really a problem to me. No, but it is if she's got a reignited sense of, like, values. In fact, actually, it would be a problem. If she's uh, under, like, hyper-conditioning and that Hawkeye's, like, assault of her in some way knocks it out of her in the same way she does to him in, in Avengers, like, that's the way to... Uh, do that narratively. But if you want to go the direction of she's really killed a lot of innocent people because she believed that was like like you do need something. You can't just be like, oh well I just did it because I guess I was supposed to, but then I started feeling too guilty. And so the way I escaped doing that was to kill a little girl. Like the, the, we got flaws there. Um It's complex, but uh I can understand what you're saying in terms of he would have killed innocent people in her job as a Black Widow. Does that sort of ruin her character to some degree? And it's like, well, no, that's what's forcing the whole Red Ledger thing. But um, a shield operation where you're trying to uh, organize an assassination based on the presence of a little girl via an explosion. It's just like, wait, what? What's happening? Funnily enough, this is when Hydra had control of shield as well. Maybe that does make sense. Maybe it doesn't. Who the fuck knows what's going on right now? They all had awareness of... That was the thing, man. It's a shield operation, and they didn't even care about looking into his, like, organization. How does that make any sense? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, RLM mentioned during their review that Disney basically has the big fight scenes already being animated and made before they even get writers and a script set up. The pre-biz happens like three years ahead of time on a uh, Endgame. You know what that reminds me of? The fact that they've seen Black Widow, Captain Marvel, I'm pretty sure they saw Endgame. 
Um, but they refuse to see No Way Home. Like, okay. Hmm. I would have been interested to see what they thought of No Way Home, but never mind. That's, um, now I'm thinking about that, because it's it's something as well in the Sam Waymy, uh, Waymy, Raimi quote about not watching WandaVision. He said that he was told, like, the or shown the important parts, or told about the important parts he needed to watch. It's like, is that how it works? Like, there's someone at Marvel who says, you only really need to see these parts, uh, and then you'll be yeah. good. And, if, and that could explain a lot in terms of, like, you're missing so much context that um that there were like these one or two lines and scenes that weren't highlighted as important that could just totally throw you off. Dude, I have to imagine that uh, that's not how it used to work. That's not, gotta I, be a new thing. I, I, I gotta, I don't know what other series would have it be like that, right? Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure the Harry Potter films had different directors. I imagine that they watched the whole of the other films. Well, I'm even sad they... to know that, like Daisy Ridley didn't know anything about Star Wars. And I'm, I'm pretty uh, sure she still does it. She's just like, it's Star Wars, I don't know. I'm just like, aww. That, yeah, that's always one of those, because like, you know, when someone's in a comic book movie and they haven't read the comics, it's like, that's, that's like one thing, right? That's not, that's not really a big deal. But if it's like, yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't like actually watched the film that I'm, I'm going to be in the sequel for. It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, no, and I said before, if I were cast or directing or writing something comic book adaptation movie, I'd be like, get me that comic book now. Yeah, might as well. I don't see what the harm will be from that. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, and then you compare the, the Virgin Daisy Ridley to the Chad, Oscar Isaac, who says his favorite is Return of the Jedi, but it's not the best one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a guy who is who wedded being like, it's my dream to fucking be in Star Wars. I've loved it since I was a kid to now being like, I'm all right, you guys go ahead. I'll keep making better movies over here, it's fine. Hey, he'll be back if he wants a mansion. Well, he'll be back for Moon Knight, because he... I suppose there's more character in Moon Knight than there is in, in Poe. Yeah. Or well, I don't know who it really is. Yeah. Red Guardian should have had a rival with rivalry with Bucky. To be fair, should have been Cap. If we were really, yeah. if we revamp the entire continuity, Red Guardian, I'm more than happy to have him in this story. But let's have something going with Cap. He's the. It would be really cool if he was this fat, washed-up, worthless, like idiot, partially cowardly, kind of self-centered version of Cap. But he is stronger. Like, um, he's just got more raw power than Cap does. Like, I think that would be. And, you know, like something to make them similar but different. So yeah. that when they fight, they're going toe to toe, but they have this different um like power sort. You know, maybe one is maybe he's weaker but more agile, or he's slower but stronger. Some sort of difference in the way that they fight. So it's not just two nearly identical people just going at it, you know. And there's a maybe there's a sneaky assassin like quality to him or something, you know. And at first you can make it a matter of there's like clear subtleties in him trying to copy Cap's body language or even some of the things he says. And the end of the arc can be that he actually like was inspired by Cap. Simple as. Um, there's loads of potential there. Instead, he's a joke. Um, and the only good thing that happens with his character is something that David Harbour suggested, so. Uh. It's not even a bad thing when that happens. It's just indicative that the writers have no fucking clue what they're doing. That's all. Because, like, when you've got a really well-written character and someone suggests something that's, like, oh, that's great, it's just like, oh, this is cool, everything's working really well. But when it's the only good thing suggested, it's like, what the hell? What happened? What's worse, Russia tossing away the only super soldier they have, or Wakanda having a super weed farm anyone can use, steal, and destroy? Um, <laughs> they're both pretty fucking bad. Yeah, he was put away- this super soldier was put away because he said he was critical of the party. I just, um, I, I wonder- Yeah, it's, it's just- in that there's so many different ways that you could be critical that I- we could have learned something about his character yeah. through the- knowing what the reason was. What did he say? Who did he upset? Why did he do it? Did he do it knowing what it might cost him? You know, stuff like that. 
To be fair, I can easily imagine the Russian government in the 1990s might toss away super soldiers even if they put them in prison. At least it wouldn't surprise me. There is an argument to be had about how much they disappear people. Thing is, he is their only super soldier. So, what did he say? Because, like, it must have been really bad, I guess. But then why wouldn't they kill him? Yeah, it's like the it's the worst middle ground. He's still around. Now he hates you. Yeah. But he's yeah, it, it it, it could have been nifty nifty if their their relationship was rocky, but his importance was so great that they kept him around. Mhm. Mm Natasha landing on her feet equals broken. I'm a boulderer slash wall climber and I fell once from a four meter tall wall and landed wrong on my left foot into a roll on a really thick soft mat and I still sprained it. I do like the idea that you're like, you see that scene where she falls and you're like, okay, I'm I'm a, ro a professional rock climber and I can <laughs> just like, you don't need this, fine. We know. You don't need to, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't need you're any expertise just a really. You're baby boy. You are not a you are not a Black Widow trained assassin. She's trained to fall properly. That was you one of those. Received that kind of training. There are these things that happen in movies, bad movies, that are still like liked by some people or whatever. But there are certain elements where it's like, yep, that one's not getting past the average person. When people see that one, they're gonna think it's bullshit. And that was one of those. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it implies just, that all the people who made it climate, knew yeah. what they were doing when they were making it. They're like, ah, well, yeah, it's like, that. how could you possibly? Think that nobody would <laughs> be baffled. Well, yeah, like I could totally see them saying, like, fall. "Well, it's superhero stuff, isn't it? It's superheroes." We'll <laughs> say, even though she's like a normal person. Yeah, she's a, she's a mere mortal. I, I even a woman think... in Disney production, granted, but still a mere mortal. It's possible the person who made that fucking movie would be like, "Well, Black Widow, she's like she's got super strength, or whatever, right? Or uh, enhanced strength." A Captain America? <laughs> and you'd be like, no? And they're like, no. yeah, she was uh, she was like a super soldier for the Russians or whatever. And you're like, no, no. Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> and they're like, yeah, uh, it's the whole, it's, uh, it's oh, whatever. Fucking it's Iron Man does it. It's comic book stuff, even though I'm getting paid a lot of money for this. Mm. And I would never justify the content as being just dumb superhero content. Because I made it and it's my work. It's so, like, yeah. That's another one where it's like, you're in front of the writer being like, The movie's fucking bullshit, of course. Why are you being so, like, thingy about yeah. it? The writers knew it was bullshit. And the writers just said, they're like, like Wow, guys. Uh, <laughs> like, I have a lot more faith in the, the competency of the writers, you know? I guess you guys, that's something you gotta reconcile. Well, um, I don't know if, how this is gonna fare in terms of dating this video, weirdly, but, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, um, the, uh, the counter-argument I heard for Wanda... Uh, limping after them instead of flying after them was that it's supposed to be a creepy scene with like a zombie-like figure chasing them. It's very rainy. That's why it's like that. It's oh. just like, okay, that okay. doesn't. Okay. Um, yeah, doesn't it doesn't help. actually solve any of the. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't help. Saying why something's bad doesn't make it not bad. You just told me why it's bad. You oh, guys do I this said, a lot. You need to stop. I think I said in a video at some point regarding something like this that that's an explanation, not an excuse. Uh, which, yeah, you probably yeah. did. It's something that we've said before. Yeah, like, it, it's like, thank you for telling me why it happened. And by the way, this can get a bit dodgy sometimes in terms of so if you're like, why the fuck did this happen this way? And they go, oh, well, the actor died, and so they had to do blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that sucks. Unfortunately, even that, um... If it causes, like, severe problems for the continuity of the film or something, as a result, uh, it sucks that you'd still- it would still be meta, if you know what I mean? Just to point out, like, the, the actor died, therefore this thing happens. Um, or, uh, this director wanted this, or the whole set was destroyed when a, a thunderstorm hit, so of course it all looks different with this new set. Just stuff like that, you're just like, that sucks. Unfortunately, that doesn't change the story being in a potentially broken state. Yeah. Because um. Of that, course, yeah, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't blame you as much as someone who has a gajillion dollars and all the time hmm. in the world and everything like that. Sure, like you, you escape some level of blame, but the thing doesn't go away. Everything surrounding it might. But the well, thing doesn't go away. Let's be fair. Nobody cares to check out whether or not a production was under horrible restraints before. They decide whether or not the thing itself is uh, 
is X, Y, or Z. They usually just go like, eh, it's whatever. Like, I don't need to find out. Um, I just think it's more so to, to try and be consistent about it. So, yeah, because you know. I have no idea how you would be able to, yeah, consistently apply. Well, the the actor did die, so that means that yeah, I guess it's objectively good now because that's a that's an S plus reason on the scale of excuses. So we we don't have to count that as a flaw in the film. Like I don't even know how you begin to do stuff like that. And this is the thing, I I don't know that there's ever a problem you cannot solve that is caused by things like that. Like if it's a matter of that actor doesn't show up in the film anymore, what the fuck? And someone says, well, he died. It's like. Um, as long as you can tie tie up what that character's influence on the storyline was with throwaway lines, or you can just, unfortunately, the reality of bringing in a different actor. Um, especially these days, you can get away with all the CGI stuff, but like, even that I would actually find forgivable. Like, he shows up and he's just actually a different, like, when uh, you have like the roadie change. Like, but I don't know if they've ever done that in the middle of a film. They would, they would probably just refilm scenes yeah. and stuff. It's, it's, you know, there are solutions to these problems, and you have different uh, results that happen across different films, depending on what the directors and producers decided. So that's another variable to have to account for, then. You're like, not only do you, do you say, well, the person died, therefore it's good now, you also have to be like, well, don't you have to appreciate the level of uh, response and repairing each person did, and how good it can get, and how bad it can get, and, you know. Like, you know, you have, like, ten directors who have to deal with a dead actor, and from zero to ten, they, they do that level of repairing the script without them. Like, you want to appreciate that, right? Because that's another Yeah, you definitely can thing. appreciate things and then also say, yeah, well, it's, it's wrong, or it's bad, or... I can I, appreciate um, a temp, certainly. I forget the name of the film, but it was one that Kevin Spacey had made fully, and then the Kevin Spacey things happened, and so they literally, like, brushed him out of the entire film. He's like a protagonist, and they brushed in... Christopher Plummer, just redoing all the scenes. Wow, that so must it's, have been... It's a film I'm interested in seeing, just to see how bad that looks, or maybe how good it looks, I don't know. That must be really shit to have a movie happen yeah. like that. And then you're... Didn't you're, Army of the Dead do the same thing, where they added in One of the actors, wrote. yeah, they added oh, that yeah, blonde yeah. actress in. The pilot But that girl, whole movie looks like shit, it so it kind of fit. Actor. Yeah, Tig Notaro. Uh... So, I remember hearing about that. Like, she's always really awkwardly in scenes. Well, it's just there's only so much you can do, right? Like Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and that execution is the thing you would then talk about, I guess. You try to avoid yeah. being like, don't talk negatively about this because something unfortunate happened. It's like, oh, well, we don't. That's not really. Because, you know, if like someone vomited on set and it caused something bad to happen in the actual film, would you then well, not talk about that? Because that's a bit unfortunate. Like it's the standard thing. You can't explain this to everybody, you know? You can't go around and tell everybody what happened on set and all the problems that happened and all of the things like that the went Jackie wrong. Chan thing. It's the Jackie Chan quote. Yeah, definitely. You can't go around and explain to everybody what went wrong. Mm. But people are just going to go up and see the film. Um, um, but, it, it, yeah, it is that thing of just you, reconciling that film productions rely on people, things happen, and yeah, tra you know, some people pass away it, while the stuff is filming, and you just don't know what to really do going forward. Because yeah. it's not only about the film, but there's also a level of, like, how much respect, like, you know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a difficult sort of uh, thing to, to work around. Um, I have a friend who thinks that this film is better than the first Captain America, and it makes me upset and sad. Also, high rags. It should. It should. That person shouldn't be your friend. Cut ties with them immediately. First, first Captain America, uh, first half is like, from what I remember, pretty damn solid. Um, it's it's a solid movie. There's definitely some like world building stuff in terms of the futuristic cars and everything, but I mean, that's a solid oh, yeah, movie. That's fair. Yeah, and, and I remember, my biggest flaw with it always was uh, having access to Hydra weaponry that mm -hmm. fucking early. That changes everything forever. Yep. There's just no way around it. Um, yeah, especially based off what we did with the Chitari stuff. Yeah, um, well, the funny thing is that Avengers, Joss Whedon did incorporate it. He said that S.H.I.E.L.D. have made a whole bunch of incredible weaponry from what they found in Cap 1. And that's pretty much the best you can do 
uh, when you're that late in the game to making something a difference in our world because everything else is the same except shield of hidden that you know they got some weaponry so i guess the justification that you're supposed to accept is that shield took all of it and kept it secret um thing is i feel like it would advance our society significantly yeah probably well, they, they, it, I mean, the thing to do would just not have that crazy weaponry exist. Yeah, uh, uh, I think because it was harnessing the Tesseract that gave Hydra that yes. those abilities, and it's just Which like, you don't need to do that. You can just no, make it... No, you could just have the Tesseract have a specific thing that it's being harnessed for, but they still use regular ballistic weapons. I th Yeah, I think it actually helps the film a lot to have Cap fighting against people that just have regular weaponry instead of the crazy fucking weaponry. Well, it yeah, almost, because um, the crazy uh, weapon is pretty ineffective against his shield. <laughs> like, it yeah. just bounces off and everything. It doesn't, it's not really that useful against him. Yeah, and then you, then you have it be that maybe they have one or two, like a grand weapon and then a smaller version of that, but they both have to have the cube to be used. Yeah. And then the cube gets lost, and so no one can, you know, that fixes everything. Although they find the cube, don't they? Yeah, we'd have to do some rewrites all over it, but, um, yeah, uh, Cap 1, really good for setting up Cap's character. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. They should call this Whammon Armor instead of Plot Armor. By the way, can't wait for you guys to pick apart the Lord of the Rings Second Age series. Oh my god, we're not even, it's not even Second out yet. Second Age series, not even out not yet. Out I'm not even they sure can't this- can't wait, though. This video should be viewable before it's out. <laughs> but maybe, Hopefully. what if we're watching it right now? Who knows? What torment. What pain awaits us in the yeah. second age. Uh, the characters next change when they're revealed. Oh, they're talking about the, the Taskmaster. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really bad. The weird. shoulders are completely just, different. Uh... They changed the, they changed <laughs> the suit outright. Person. Yeah. A terrible change to make for a terrible reason that adds all of this effort and bad things into the film makes you wonder. Like I said, I'm willing uh, to believe that it, they were going to use the guy first time and then they changed it and they realized they didn't have to refilm a lot because they can just argue she was there the whole time, which is like, yeah, but, yeah, but the way you... this Olga, she's a very slender lady. I'm sorry. We need to get a buff, buff lass in order to do that. And what a waste for Taskmaster, but oh well. What a waste. Uh, so, No No Baby episode was C-137, Rick, hmm? No No Baby episode? No No Baby? Do you, do you, does that sound familiar to you, Ringy? I, I, I have no idea. No No Baby episode. Not ringing a bell, I'm afraid. Um, a wise man once said, only when a mosquito lands on your testicles will you realize that violence isn't always the answer. Um. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. You can't just slap it. That's you true. Slap or it, else no. you'll slap your testicles. And they, they, they are delicate things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was kind of disappointed with Marvel since he died of cancer in the comics. Was hoping for something like that in the movie. Uh, I'm assuming they're talking about, uh, Captain Marvel and... Yeah, well, Marvel yeah, in that. What's what, her face? What even was her what's role? Her like, she... Uh, I can't remember. She was just, like, the good scientist lady. And she got killed, I think, right? Yeah. 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 Um, what happens if a Black Widow has a cold and can't smell? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I guess it still counts because they, they BS that away with, no, the pheromone detection is still in your brain or something, so you yeah. can't just not well, yeah, breathe. The, it goes to the olfactory nerves, which is something that is really hard to make stop. Ah, uh, yeah. The olfactory yeah. nerves. Fuck me, that's something that did happen. This is what I mean, when it's like, oh, is, is, is Doc Strange 2 really worse? It's like, look, I understand the competition is heavy and, and difficult to beat, but... That they should make it. you understand how much is wrong. <laughs> we don't say things are worse than Black Widow lightly. No, and I never expected to have to say that about this fucking movie. God we damn. didn't expect it to be good, but Jesus Christ, they really outdid themselves. Easy Christ. Did I tell you, by the way, that uh, Nude Roddick didn't realize that we were kind of memeing with the whole, like, he doesn't have his sling ring in the opening? I, I can believe 
the, yeah, because it's so. He, uh, uh, he sent know. me a screenshot saying he does have a slug ray. <laughs> I was like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, we're going to get there. Uh, when Jay saw that, he was just like, wait, but if he has a sling ring, and I was like, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Writing. Uh, yeah. Hey, just cancelled a streaming service yesterday, so here you go for the good entertainment. Also, congrats on Frogman on joining the crew. What's you guys' thoughts on the Total War series Warhammer 3 coming soon? I have no opinions on it because I've never played it. I've not played a Total War game. Same. We are waging total war on all media mm. every day of our lives, but uh, we have not played it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. If the themes can be executed poorly, then can the poor be executed thematically? Oh, yeah. yes, the poor can be executed thematically. You could drown them in money. I love the, um, the, the, the Michelin web look sketch. Fucking infinitely funny and will be to the last day when they're all like, I don't know if they're like economically trying to solve problems with policy and Mitchell, David Mitchell's just like, have we tried to kill the poor? And they all like <laughs> look at him like he's a monster and he's like, I'm not saying do it. I'm saying, have we tried that? Have we put it into the computer? Have we seen what the results <laughs> would be? And then they're like, well, what if it gives us good results? And he's like, well, we're not going to do it, but it would just be, just want to see what the results are. You have a pretty good uh, voice for him. I, I knew it was exactly who he was, just by your voice. Um, I, th I, I don't know. I feel like I could do way better, because like, he's he's fucking brilliant. He's like one of my favorite uh, panelists <laughs> for anything ever. Funny. He is funny. He's rants. I always like, I watch the, the What I Lie to You clips and stuff oh, yeah. with him, and it's just funny. I'm telling you, him and Sean Locke were just oh fucking yeah. gold on those shows. Absolute gold. Um, a vote for EFAP is a vote. Yeah. That is true. A vote for EFAP is a vote. So vote for EFAP. Uh, Muller, I'd love for you guys to cover EFAP movies Tom Clancy's Without Remorse with Killmonger as the lead. It's hilariously bad. It made me want to start a channel like y'all. Also, hi, Rex. Hi. I have not I've never heard, heard of it. that. Yeah. Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. Starring... I think it's like on uh, Prime, I think, and it's got uh, the, the, the Michael B. Jordan in it. Hmm. Well, maybe we will one day. Oh. What about Michael B. Kane? I remember I watched uh, a bit of the Jack Ryan show on, um, on Prime, and it was like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's mm. all right. They are... Jack Ryan, not the Reacher? Uh, no, 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 Jack, Ry Jack Ryan. Um, okay. The... I'm not mixing them up. Jack no, you, is, uh, I'm pretty sure Jack Reacher, Reacher and Ryan are two different uh, things. Okay, Reacher is um, a child, I think, whereas Jack Ryan is, um, is yeah, Tom Clancy. Yeah, um, and that's um, John... Why am I forgetting his name? Guy from The Office, right? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's John Krasinski. He plays... Asshole. It upsets me that uh, A Quiet Place is like his baby sort of thing, and it's like really bad. Well, okay. Because I like him. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he's yeah, not like that upset about it, everybody. He, he, as far as he's aware, right? Like, in terms of general consensus, everybody loves it. Oh, I'm sure he does not give a fuck about my movie opinions. I'm saying yeah. <laughs> I like it when people you I should. like make things that I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very lizard brainy. Uh, mm hmm. Massives, massives. The tic-tac-toe thing is a metaphor for the amount of thought put into this film. They couldn't even get a game right that is taught to chimpanzees and chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, though. <laughs> it was How do you mess up tic-tac-toe? Somehow Black Widow found a way to then, mess up tic-tac-toe. Doctor Strange 2 is like, all right, we really got to up it up this time. Like the Up it up? Yeah, that's, that's, up that sounds up. like the way they would say it. I think that was a good impression, right? Kind of language yeah. they would use. Yeah. That's a Doctor Strange line. We Fap 2024, or We Chat 2024, or the controversial third party Sitch and Adam party. Note, Adam and Sitch, awesome, just need a third party so no one cares about. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, party of EFAP, the party of EFAP chat, or the Sitch and Adam party, which is only there to make it seem fair that there's more than two parties. 
what would Black Widow and SFFH be if release date switch? I don't know from home, I guess is what they're saying. Hmm. What would they be would if they, they be? release date switched? Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Like, like, would Black Widow have been more successful, maybe? Is that what they're asking? Maybe. Maybe. Can't begin to tell you the answers to that, because it seems like all of these movies are just fucking successful. Well, uh, Black Widow and Eternals had a little bit of trouble. Not, like, compared, anyway. I guess comparatively. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Norway, an unknown man in Norway has been pooping in golf holes for the last 10 years. Oh, okay. Absolute madness. <laughs> you don't even know until your yeah. ball goes in the hole and you reach down and you're like, oh my god, gotta, <laughs> I can't believe I've got a, I've got a poopy golf ball now. Imagine this he did madness. it after they've, you know, like they swing and it goes in the hole and they head over <laughs> he there and he over. runs on and he's like, I gotta poop, gotta do it. Takes a crap on it and then <laughs> runs away. A fresh one right on top. How to do it. Uh, gentlemen, you are missing the point. The movie isn't good or bad. It's just as the TVA determined. Every indescribable event falls on the Loki show. Yeah. It depends on uh, which Loki anymore, fan you talk to, though, because some yeah. fans are like, well, no, because Loki's uh, destroyed and that applies to all of time in real time, so. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Loki takes place in the timeline everywhere and nowhere. That like, makes total sense. <laughs> it's okay. like, okay. You guys uh, carry on. I'll be right back. I need to get this drink out of the freezer. Mm. I've begun it before we began. Not that we ever stopped, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll, I will be right back. This is a time-sensitive issue. If you don't remember, I did a Boromir video, and more that you'd be proud. It is one hour and four minutes long. I plan to do more things because of this podcast and channels presented in it. Hey. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable amount of time to make a video that's just about Boromir. All I need to say. He's, uh, he's a good lad. The instant she put the staff in the engine, it would have flung her. She doesn't have the strength to stop an engine. What are we, what are we talking about? No idea. It's been too long. Staff in the engine. Is it Avengers? Uh, staff in the engine. More of a what? scepter into a, some kind of generator. But that might be what they're talking about. And oh. if you said it should have flung it, what I would say is that that is designed to be its failsafe. That's the idea. Yeah. Uh, which, to be fair, is uh, not the worst writing ever. Um, that that Loki had Elvig build in a failsafe that he could cut off the army at his will. Because that does yeah. seem like the kind of backstabby thing it. Loki might do. And he might need it, yeah. Um, and I like then that you should be like, yeah, Selvig retains a lot of what happened while he was under, which is the same for Hawkeye, I think. Uh, yes. That's right. So, uh, remember, this is what I'm saying, like, I swear to God we don't hate everything. It's, <laughs> we just want stuff like that. Stuff to grasp It's like, ah, ah, okay. And I don't see why that should blow her off like the rooftop or whatever. I I, I imagine Loki wouldn't want to make it so that it blows him away when he does that. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, Mola. The reason the humans couldn't find the red room is because they don't know how to go up. Okay, that's canon in the fucking Star Wars universe, but not in the MCU just yet. Hope. Who knows? Give him time. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, compare uh. how Tony and Cap look at the end of Infinity War and Endgame, and compare it to how these girls look at the end of this movie. Well, I mean, they got like mud I'm on like them and stuff. Earth they are, yeah. Well, I mean, that seems to be the way that it works. You put mud on someone, it's like, ah, you've been in a fight. It's like, well, mm -hmm. really, it should be hurt, right? Like, especially, especially considering how much Natasha got. Thrown That's, around and kicked all over the place. She by the should have a mangled widow. face, is the idea, but she looks very well made up, and it's like, yeah, of course she does. Yeah. I'm back. While, um, yeah, Cap and Tony will have, like, you know, 
wounds on their face and stuff. Yeah. Um, I wonder when they'll, if ever they'll ever do that, like have a star, the superhero thing, have facial wounds that carry through to like, you know, the rest of the show or whatever. That would be a attention to detail, eh? And I'm not talking about a, a scar that goes from the center of your eyebrow down your cheek, the coolest scar that exists ever. Okay, I'm talking about like very cool thing where I don't my know. My enemy it, OC has <clears throat> uh, that kind of scar because he killed a dragon. And he uses his its fang as his great sword, and it mm -hmm. collects the souls of everything it slays, and it gets Ooh, like powerful Katana. the more souls it kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really something special. Mm -hmm. Really something special, Molly. True amalgamation of made-for-TV and direct-to-video quality filmmaking, on par with such VHS classics as Speed 2, Cruise Control, and American Psycho 2. I mean, it does... Two wasn't directed DVD, was it? It was uh, that was in theaters. I don't know. I can't confirm that. I remember it. Um, well, you know, like one of the it, things but... I think is, wait, you're talking about you, Speed Two, the um, the bus that couldn't speed slow down. Two, yeah, Speed Two, no, Speed Boat that Two slow down. was the boat oh. that couldn't slow down. And yes, it was released in theaters, but it didn't do so great. <laughs> I actually, uh, I, I thought you'd pick up on the, that was a Simpsons reference. Oh yeah, but you're it. doing it wrong, because that's Speed 1. Well, if Speed 1 was like, it's like Speed 1. So, no, you, you've you done what, because it was Homer who said it, you've just done yeah. what he did, but like, that yeah, wasn't that was... me, right? You, you were actually confused about which one was which? No, 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 I was just doing the reference more so, but I didn't know what Speed 2 was about, so I was like, oh, that's like the bus that couldn't slow down. Well, so, it's Speed... Wait, no, because the reference in the, in the Simpsons was he said it was, it was like the movie was one. called The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down. Yeah. There was nothing to do with Speed 2, Cruise Control. I know, I, you mentioned Speed 2, and so I said, oh, is that like The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down? Is that like Speed 1? Is that what you said? I, I, sure. I think so. I just like I said, I, I wouldn't okay. have acknowledged it because I was like, the fuck the reference. The point up being by that it. this was <laughs> all of this was actually a setup to my other joke that I was going to make, which I think is the superior of the two, because that one wasn't really a joke. It's just more of a reference that I thought you'd appreciate. I'm just glad I know a Simpsons reference. Mm -hmm. um, that that is that's that's, that's a good that's one. Good. It it is it did make when I first saw that in the episode, I did laugh very hard. He says it so solemnly. It's because of the way that he builds it up, and then that's... Yes. Yeah. We all know what film he's talking about, that he's <laughs> the bus that couldn't <laughs> slow down. couldn't slow down. But I was going to say speed. that pirating uh, speed... Uh, pirating speed one is probably the best way to get that movie. In fact, it's the freeway. Nice. I'm just... Because, uh, so... Speed One had a budget of about 30, 40 million, made 350 million, so that's pretty good. Oh, that's very good. Um, Speed Two cost 110 to 160 million dollars, <laughs> um, so it was a bit more expensive, and it made 164.5 million dollars. So, uh, and it, to think, it wasn't. It could have been franchised if it made more. It could have become like Fast and Furious. Oh well. Yes, that series but, uh, really ran out of fuel. It would have been oh. pretty cool to have it just, they just keep switching modes of transportation. It's just, but that's just it. And then the, eventually the, it's just like a guy on roller skates. They just run out of things. <laughs> I just think they should go sci fi, you know, and then they should Speed pod race. Three. I couldn't. Speed three, uh, what? Uh, momentum or something. Speed three, wait, sorry. Cons yeah, conservation of energy or something. Yeah, you could do all kinds of crazy shit. And then, you know, Keanu Reeves Speed comes three, back in the ninth law. one. And Sandra Bullock. Yeah, exactly. You, you got options there. Tobey Maguire, bring him in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of well, all of the... Was Keanu Reeves in Speed 2? No, no, he wasn't. That was one of the notable things about it. That he didn't oh. come back for it. Willem yeah, Dafoe well, they, was. They, you, yeah. Oh! Well, we have to see it now. I don't think I've seen Speed 2. I've seen Speed 1, but I would like to rewatch it. I think Speed 1 and so 2 would be a good EFAP double bill, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, based on what I remember about Speed 1. Mm hmm. How much coom can a coom chuck chuck if a coom chuck could chuck coom? High metal. Probably 
Quite a bit. Quite a bit, I'm thinking. Oh, my bad, yeah. Uh, Molia Gay. All right. Uh, could you please fix the Moolah EFAT playlist the way it is now if so slightly inconveniences me? Thanks, buddy. Uh, I probably need to update that again, actually. That's my bad. I will get to it at some point. Prianus. The jacket will return in Avengers Next Thing. Avengers Next Thing is such an appropriate mm -hmm. title. I'm thinking about making a series about the absolute states of Star Wars in the MCU. Gaming videos don't usually do it for me solo, but I do love writing, so I might dip my toe into the media coverage. Do it. Yeah, go for it. You might really enjoy it. You might find yourself an audience. Yeah. You also might fall to the dark side mm. and have to watch things three times as long as it doesn't bore you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Okay. I guess it is. Cause it, fuck me, with the things that I like actually find annoying, very useful if they're not boring to watch. I suppose that's true. Um, obviously that goes for the things I love as well, but I figure that's self-planatory. Um, Super Jack Ketchup will never end long, man. Never. Oh yeah. We'll see about that. And, yeah, uh, we'll show them. The last question for this Black Widow Ketchup. That's incredible. If Hitler was a guest, what would you discuss in depth and what interesting thing would you like to see Hitler's reaction to? Um, honestly, I would really like to get his impression on... I think the Star Wars movies always, you know, come to mind. His position on the prequels, does Hitler like the prequels? Or does he... or is he similar to us, you know? Is Hitler similar to EFAP on this position? I would like where... to go through the Star Wars saga with him, yeah, and ask him Absolutely, what he thinks about yeah. the politics of the um, the Empire, I guess. Yeah, uh, could the Empire have made improvements? Do you think it's a bit uh, on the nose? Do you know, Like, would... if he's trapped and he's forced to be honest and stuff, I'd be like, that Death Star, don't you think... Like, I know you think it's great and everything, but don't you think maybe there's problems there? Maybe. See what he says. It would, I mean, the, the Germans were fond of their super weapons, you oh, know? Yeah. In fact, what is Death Star in German? It is, um, the Todesstern? Hmm. To well, so, Todesstern. you'd think death in German would sound much cooler. Tod. Uh, how, how, Tod. But I, I don't know, but yeah. I think, I think Tod. death sounds cooler as death than it does as the German vision. I think there are some cool English words out there, you know? There are many cool English Leviathan words. Leviathan is a cool English word. It is, yeah. Assuming we didn't steal that from someone else. Well, so I was gonna say a lot of this is probably stolen from other places, but like, I guess but that's well, part of the strategy. Is, uh, that's part of the strategy. A lot of stuff in English. A lot of legal uh, terms and names are derived from French, like plaintiff. It's a French word. <laughs> well, a lot um, of Latin, of course. And, and Latin, yeah, Latin is uh, a lot of Latin. Is, Most of our words come from Latin, and especially in legalese, there's a lot of just straight which, up. Latin. Latin is one of the coolest sounding languages ever, so that probably lines up. It is. They I always... wonder what it is that makes Latin sound cool, though, is it the fact that, um, hmm, I'm not sure. It has this, it has this pedigree about it that definitely yeah, helps. Maybe. Well, because you only ever see it used, because it's, at this point, there's really no reason to ever use Latin, except we just still do, occasionally. I just, it, it's always associated with, like, Spell casting, chanting, runes, ancient places, descriptions on like things that mean a lot. It's 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 uh, used like has um, a reverence to it. The the whole the 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 char race in Guild Wars, their they a lot of their terminology and naming is Latin based. Uh, a lot of their martial stuff. You have centurions and legionnaires and things of that nature. But in games, Latin has it just has this kind of dare I say gravitas to it um it has it's just got this weight in this 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 kind of mm. reverence and pedigree linguistically that you can apply and it's it it conjures up so much rich imagery it's perpetually useful and if you know latin it helps you know english uh, a great deal because so many of our words come from latin and a lot of times when you hear latin words like uh, you will be like, oh, I know what this Latin word means, and I don't even... But just because of how it sounds, because it's so Im similar to the, you know, the English words and how we get things, you know? 
death being like mortis. They're like, oh yeah, mort, you know, mortician, mortuary. Okay, you Morticia. see those connections all the time. Morticia, she's a bitch. She will kill you. Hmm. Where about Reaper? That come from? Um. Hmm. Reap. Let me see. Um. I assume Reap. Uh, yeah. So that would be uh, from the old English reaping, reopen. Well, the reason why it's I think I think it's um is because of the um the because I I grew, I looked at Reaper on Wikipedia and it it talks about like the farming equipment right that you use to gather. Oh yeah, cross uh, I'm, I'm assuming so, like, I guess origin has to from. involve or cross section with some of that. Well, it's because uh it's because it's often done with a scythe. And that's what the well, yeah, death has a scythe walks around it. with. Man, the way that that it's... lines up, Jesus, <laughs> so many parallels there. It's the... it's a grim reaper, you see, because usually when you get to reap, reap the crops, there's good omens, but in this case, it's grim. It's pretty uh, yeah, pretty yeah. clever. It act I actually like the that. Grim... Dude, the grim reaper is one of the coolest yeah. concepts like yeah. ever. Oh yeah, grim. Grim Reaper is one of my favorite. Like that's that's definitely I would I I would really like to do a story about the Grim Reaper as like a concept. It's Reaper really in cool. Latin is Mesorem. Oh. From the oh, Mesor. The more you learn. The Reaper, yeah. We know, but still. Um, yeah. Well, that's that. So thank you all for listening to this uh, this wonderful little catch up more on the way theoretically uh or oh, we fully caught up i don't even know when this is releasing exactly thanks so much very kind and for, for for hanging out with us and we shall see you in the next one whatever that will be goodbye everybody see you later